What is up, everybody? All right. Time to murder Morgan. Or get murdered by Morgan, depending on how this goes. So we got to get to her first, but that should not be too difficult. Hey, now, fun. Let's see if FP Summon gives us anything good at the last second here. So many raid ups. Hey, rabbit. No three stars. Well, my sound's a little loud. There we go, that should be better. Okay, that's a long chapter, though I suspect some of that stuff is non-combat. Where are we in the story here? I think we're on the way to Camelot. Yeah. Alright, every class ever, probably time for a Berserker. You know what? We'll do a Stereos. That could work. Oh! Let's see. Totally be totally reasonable team, nothing weird here. Do I just Lancer Artoria NP? Seems kind of reasonable. I don't think this account actually has Angra leveled. Pretty sure it has Angra though. So, if they made that Morgan Craft Essence a costume and they sold it for five dollars, like just five dollars, they would make a lot of money off that, I'm pretty sure. They do anything with Morgan and they're gonna make a lot of money. Mmm. That Lancer needs to die. Don't really have a good hand for that though. I think it's time to Asterios NP. I think Asterios has most of his Buster cards in the next hand. Yep, and then we're gonna do regular Morgan. I mean, you know, maybe someday, but it's pretty rare that they'll do the normal version of a character if they found some weird way to introduce some wacky version. Like occasionally they've, they've done, they've done it, but not a lot. Like we don't have normal Paul Bunyan, even though they say he exists. We don't have normal Masashi, even though we know what his NP is. Um. Let's see, I guess we have normal Arthur, in a sense, kind of. Um, that's about it, though, unless I'm forgetting something. Alright, let's see. Three stars on Asterios. Yeah, that's, uh... That's, like, that's gonna do so well. I guess bonk bonk. Damn it, I could... Fuck, I underestimated his damage dramatically there. 
Yeah, they made real deal Nobu, but uh, that's not getting added. Also, that was almost like a meme. Yeah, Arthur was pretty lucky. We don't have regular Van Gogh when we got wacky Van Gogh. Don't have regular Hogasai. Okay, it's got its NP. I could blast it with Tristan. 46k is a lot, and we don't really have a good turn here. Really don't want to use Tristan's NP, because I think the final wave is going to be Saber's. Well, I don't think I have a choice, so... They're, they're definitely not going to add regular Gorgon because that's not even summonable. That one's kind of reasonable, but then they found a way to make Waifu Gorgon. That's the less reasonable part. They got uh, Medusa's daughter that they like hinted at twice a really long time ago and they just completely forgot about. That'd actually be pretty cool if they did that in 3.0. Did the game just crash? I think the game crashed. As always, it crashes a lot on the Herc account, but I've actually had it, it's been crashing on my phone as well, but um, that's cause like that phone update I had. And my phone's getting old. Might be time that I get a new one. Man, Oblivion is, uh, that's a game. I don't think I'd ever stream that. I did enjoy that game to an extent, but, uh... I don't think it would really fit my channel, and it's really old, and... Hey, look, we have to do this again! Yeah, games have been running so stable for me, especially on the Herc account, but that's because I think the emulator is set up improperly because my other emulator accounts haven't had a problem. Uh, and then on my phone, I've been having some issues, but since the last patch, it got better, but it's still been... Every one... Instead of crashing, what happens now is every once in a while the game starts, like, really slowing down and, like, skipping frames and stuff, and you have to restart it, and then it fixes it. I don't think Burgess will actually- you don't have to actually fight her here. It's- oh yeah, I remember, if you break her health bar, uh, something happens. Like, okay, I guess we are fighting or something like that, I can't remember what it is, but... Uh, I think you just have to kill these two guards, and she has massive damage resist. So, saving on Tristan was actually completely pointless, but... I didn't realize we were fighting Burgess already. Time to... The Mysterious Brave Chain, too bad he doesn't have his Star Absorb there and his Buster up. Probably would have killed that thing. And Burgess is like secretly on our side. I'm pretty sure if you break her health bar, what happens is you have to actually like if you if you don't break your health bar, you just have to beat the two people on the side. Or if you break your health bar, then you have to you have to beat her as well. But you still don't kill her in the story or anything. It's just kind of like a silly little thing. It kind of just like gets her to you know fight a little bit. She like likes fighting. And I think she keeps the damage resistance, but I, I'm not sure. I know she keeps it for all of the first health bar.
Yeah, Tales of Viseria, I really liked the cast and setting and everything. Uh, definitely one of the better Tales games in that department, but it's got some of the worst gameplay. Now, it's better than, like, what was the one? Oh, God, what was the one before it? Zestria, that's the one. It's not as bad as that, but, uh... I wish it had, like, a really good combat system, because then I would, like, love that game, right? I think it could have been such a great game, but because its combat system is pretty eh. And then Arise has a better combat premise, but the enemy design in terms of, like, the roof sets and stuff is really bad, so it kind of hurts it. But the core of combat is actually very good, but then I don't like the, the cast and... It's not even the cast, actually. The cast is fine. It's the writing. The writing is just so bad in, in Arise, Tales of Arise, that it kind of... Runs it for me. All right, this is the Lolly Dragon. Uh, what do you guys want to see from our support? We could always do regular Lancelot. I kind of like that idea. Hold on, if I'm gonna do that, I have to give him command codes. But I'll, I'll give Chad a second. No, not a Buki. You always want a Buki. She works though. She uh, good for boss fights. Furriest. That's kind of thematic because of her uh, being on our side. Fergus could probably solo this stage. I don't even remember how it works. Saber, Alter. I don't think anyone has Saber, Alter. That'd be kind of unique, though, just because she's not actually good for this fight. But I'm sure if we had, like, a Grailed one or whatever, it'd still be interesting. Baldy. God. Chat kind of wants Burgess, it looks like. We could do Burgess. The Lancelot thing, I'm sure it would work, so we can always do something else. Yeah, Arise was just... It's not just black and white, it's like, the the writing is just bad. I mean, like, it's really bad. Like, a lot of the the premise behind a lot of the actions and stuff is just not explained, or it's just so stupid. Yeah, there's always Max is Mordred. Oh, we'll use Burgess. Let me give her command codes here. Not, again, I don't remember the fight so well, so I'm not really sure what we would even want, but I'll give her, like, basic stuff. That can't go wrong. Dude, Neo Benkei is a lot more badass than uh, Fko Benkei. And apparently he's in the sequel. That's how people know that that monster or uh, monk guy on the bridge is Benkei. Uh, he's only a monster, but he's a big boy. But um, the reason people know that is got something to do with Neo 2 and like time travel or something they were saying. But you can, it's not surprising. He was kind of clearly a monk and he kind of had the, the vibe. All right, Burgess, command codes, definitely heal boost. Uh, we'll give her Merlin command code. Do heal on Buster. I don't remember if there's like defense buffs or, you know what, actually just in case, um, on art card, I'm gonna give her the attack defense removal just because she might have either one of the buffs or both. It's a, it's a nice safe thing to do. And then we'll do Merlin on quick. It's it's not a solo, it's it's a team setting, so that's fine. And then we'll do a heal on Buster in case she needs the heal a billion damage in one turn, and then we'll do what on the other one? I guess anti-dragon. That's 20% damage, that seems good. Either that or debuff clear, but I don't remember debuffs, but I also don't remember really anything about this fight. I know she has health bars, and she probably NPs multiple times. Alright, she is set up. I'm not grailing Bazette right now, I'm grailing Tesla, and obviously Ku. Why, why do they do this? Like, why, why, why do they do this? God. And it's just so frustrating, because I've, I've seen so many people defend this with like, you know, oh, but it's so story relevant and blah, 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 blah. But in every other story, you know, these are the servants that you're actually hanging out with, but then you don't have to use them. You know, you don't have to use Bedivere versus Gwen. Right? You can, but you don't have to. All right, what does this account have? I don't think she goes into her third form in this fight. 
I also, I don't think you get a mystic code here. I'm pretty sure that's the thing. Like, yeah, I don't think you have a mystic code here. So we need self-reliant stuff. That could be good. Do I have Bedivere? I do not. No, I do. 1-1-1 one, 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 though. No, no buff either. We'll see. Might throw one of them out just for like filler. I don't need the other sabers until Burgess might potentially die. There we go, that's not too bad. Wait, he's quick NP, I think. All right, I didn't bother to give any of my units command codes, but it shouldn't matter. Pretty sure you don't get a mystic code, so I'll just bring one to get XP. Yeah, Bedivere is better at 1-1-1 than most people because a lot of it, the primary effects on his skills don't actually scale with skill rank, but the, the upgrade matters, and in the first skill you get more damage if you upgrade it. And then the cooldowns. But as a backup unit, that's probably just gonna show up and do the one thing. You don't, the cooldowns don't matter too much. Oh, she already has her MP, how about that? Well, uh, seems like a good time to taunt Muramasa. Either that or we taunt Chin Gong because he has evade, but honestly, I'm okay with taunting Muramasa. Might as well have him MP before dying. That won't do a whole lot here though. If I do his Art Buster Buster, and then I do her third skill, and then next turn I do Chin Gong's defense up, she might get her MP. Probably not though, because she'll probably only get to like 74. And then she was like 84, so 94. Yeah, she probably wouldn't quite make it, so I don't think it's worth. I think I'll, do I want to save the heal? Got a 70% crit, but it's half damage, so. I think we'll just use it. Seventeen K. Pretty sure Burgess just did more with that Buster card. Oh no, Muramasa died. How did that happen? Oh my god, I think I remember the gimmick in this fight. She NPs every turn. Yep. It's not actually that hard to deal with, to be honest, but we are um, not set up properly for that at all. Yeah, I just now remember that's what, what it is. Okay, so we need to be way more burst. Or our setup needs to be way more bursty. Those two can probably phase tank, though. Pretty sure Bedivere can break here without using his first skill, so I could save it for Burgest. He's level 70. Eh, we'll just use it to be safe. If Phil got a defense buff, what skill should it be on? It'd be pretty easy to put it on anything, really. It's easy enough to just not use his NP gain or to use it right away, right? So he could do the NP gain, but same thing for the charisma generally. But probably the NP gain. Funnily enough though, Gil has super strong shields in Gate of Avalon that he's actually used twice, but never in an anime. He does it in Fate Zero, but only the book. And he does it in Phase Strange Fake, but yeah, he whips out shields that can block normal phantasms and stuff. So actually, defense up would be reasonable for him, but, uh... And we didn't break. Should have buffed more. Damn it. That sucks. God damn it, now I'm just gonna sit here with Burgess and P doing nothing. I guess I'll eat her buffs just because. I can hit her twice. But, uh... It's good to get rid of the NP ups, honestly, but I can only get rid of one either way. 
Damn, I wish I'd broken there. I could have just gone to ham on the next health bar here. Yeah, I imagine if you get rid of her NP buffs, then her NP won't do much damage. Papers anyway. Oh, she got sure hit. Rip Chen Gong. I think I even... Do I have the Kanith CD? I don't even know. But we didn't equip it. Man, I lose my bus drop. This sucks. Cause I, I didn't know how the fight worked at all, so... Oh, it's not just that, though. That was just bad luck without breaking and all that. Wish she'd hit Burgess. She wouldn't have really done any damage to Burgess. Okay. Uh, honestly, I kind of want—I think we'll still win, but I want to reset just because that was so unsatisfying. But I shouldn't waste the AP. But like, man, that's unsatisfying. Like Chen didn't even use his giant buster up and all that. Like this sucks. Well, we removed the, the sure hit. I didn't even really think about that. She's still alive. Do I want... Yeah, I guess he's okay for a good target dummy. I don't want Karna dying too fast. So the most useful command code would be the one that removes a crit buff. That way you could get to the NP buffs easier. Although I guess you could also just equip the... There's two command codes now that remove an NP buff. If you combine that with Burgess's ability, you could just get rid of all of the dragons, Molly Dragon's buffs here and... Um, you get to kill it really fast. So now we're going to not have our buff removal to get rid of that invulnerability. Basically did everything in this fight wrong. But it's not that hard of a fight, so we might win anyway. One turn. Actually, we're probably gonna lose when I think about it. Our Karna's really not gonna get any value here. Oh my god, Icy, shut the fuck up. No, don't you play innocent with me. I know what you're doing. Yeah, we're gonna lose, actually. Let's see. Uh, well, well, we might, we might squeak out a win. I don't think so, though. We've lost. It's mainly just because Chen Gong didn't do anything. I had no idea. I, I, I couldn't remember this fight, uh, strangely enough. It's because even though it looks kind of hard, it really isn't. Like, it's not that hard to just burst her down, so... I didn't remember this fight at all. Even though I've done it twice. Let's see. Wow, that is so unlucky. Are you kidding me? God, this run is just so frustrating, dude. Like, are you kidding me with that? Get all per, uh, caster coup cards there. So we, we've gotten zero NP gain on Karna over two turns now. Because he hasn't been attacked and he hasn't gotten to do any cards. So he, uh, yeah, well, that, that's probably GG. I, I don't think, we can live one turn, but not two. Oh, no, there's no way he's gonna do enough damage. No offense to Karna, but he's really not that good of a saber. He's like, he's like serviceable, right? But he's not like good. Like, Bedivere is better. Yeah, okay. 
That was really frustrating. Like, every, everything about that fight was just really frustrating. We had the complete wrong team. We had horrible RNG throughout it. All right. Let me give Burgess a few slightly different things. Now that we know what the fight is, though, I think it's gonna be, I, don't, I doubt we would even need it. Like, we'll just bring some taunts and stuff. Trying to remember. I know one of the new command codes removes an NP buff, but I don't actually remember which one it is. It's like Taiga or something, it's one of those. Not that important though, mostly just go with anti crit, I think. I don't really care if she crits, but if you remove the crit, then you'll have an easier time removing her other buffs. I'm looking at the text between the Taiga one and the uh, Amakusa hat, and they're very similar, so I assume that's the anti NP one. Alright, that ought to do the job. Hey, say. Give Bedivere some stuff, if if we have anything applicable. Uh, the new challenge bus is kind of fun. It's not. It's a little easy to be honest because um, there's so many units that are easily accessible that just counter the shit out of it, but uh, it's still fun and it's very unique and there's a lot of different styles to approach it. Uh, so I like it. I wish we could replay it whenever we wanted to, but obviously we can't because this game. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of unique ways to approach that challenge quest. I haven't tried it yet, but I think Burgess is godly there. And yeah, you just said Burgess is good there, but I, I was thinking about that. Like, not only is she counterclassing and all that, and she's tanky, but the buff removal thing that she can do is crazy strong there, because there's a lot of like annoying defense ups and evade and, and the taunt and all that uh, from Berg, uh, or, uh, Pizette that you can just remove. Yeah, she's really good. Soloed it with Chaco. I had a feat. Yeah, I bet you Burgess can solo it. But yeah, I'm not surprised at all Chaco Jana can solo it because you remove all their offensive buffs. So they're not doing too much damage. And then Saber's effective against uh, Alter Ego and then super effective against Lancer. So yeah, I bet you Burgess and Chaco Jana can both solo that. Probably a few other ones too. Actually, Ku might even be able to solo it if you've got the event bonus. Uh, Max. You have, to have very, you have to bring very particular command codes uh, and such, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he could do it. Alright, what do we have on um, Butterbeer here? Okay, this is anti-crypt. That's good. I've actually got a lot of command codes that are applicable to this fight, surprisingly. I don't think we really need them. I think all we really need to do is bring, like, George, but... Uh, game work with me. Oh god, you're right. Burgess is anti-alter ego. Yeah, she definitely can solo that stage. You probably have to be a little careful though, just because Burgess can quick charge, uh, you know, she'll, uh, she has a skill where she'll quick charge uh, coup to NP ticks, and she uses it pretty often. Uh, and Burgess' one weakness is NP spam. Uh, I, I imagine if you got unlucky with Burgess, and this is probably true for Chaco Jana too, if you get insta killed like twice from Ku, it's probably GG. Because Chaco Jana has guts, so that helps a lot, but if you get like insta killed twice in a row, that, that's probably game over. But thankfully, even though Ku has insta death up, his insta death chance is not actually anything special. He has really high uh, NP damage, uh, even if you're, he's not as upgraded as mine. Like, you can just be like level 80 or 90 and he still does insane damage. 
A lot of people just sleep on Ku because they, they're like, oh, he doesn't have a lot of damage up, but it doesn't really matter because, first off, he does have damage up, and when you're low on health, it actually goes up to 50%, which is more than almost all budget units. Most budget units do not have a 50% attack up. That's not a thing. Um, but he's 20 to 50% attack up. He has the highest attack stat out of every single 1 to 3 star Lancer. And because Lancers have a higher damage mod, it's pretty much higher than almost every 1 to 3 star. And then he also has an upgraded MP. So he actually just has one of the best budget hitting NPs in the game. It's just people are stupid and they're like, oh, Ku doesn't do any damage, which is just wrong. Like, we use Ku on all my other accounts at lower level. And even at 70 on a lot of my accounts, and he still does way above normal damage. Yeah, that 175 flat damage. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the important part. Also, in most of my videos, like Ku wins with so much excess value that he doesn't need to be as strong as he is. Okay, I'm not sure. I really wish you could just not bring these two. Like, they don't do anything, so I wish you could just not bring them at all. Uh, I'm not sure we need to bring two sabers like that. I don't mind Vetiver because his defense up makes it pretty easy to face tank on one turn. Let's see, do I have the Kanith thing? I guess we don't. That's unfortunate this account doesn't have it. We've got the other one, but that, you know, uh, sure hit on the boss there. Maybe what we do, because we might taunt Chen Gong before she gets sure hit, is just like gas, gas, gas at the start. And so, uh... Man, they're gonna be so annoying back there, though. If we do it that way. Maybe just do... The thing is, Burgess isn't that good for this, because she's kind of slow and steady. That's not really what you want here. Kinda just wanna, like, murder, 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 murder. I feel like Karna could pretty easily get some value here. I don't know, this might be crazy. I might try this without a taunt. And uh, just try to remove enough buffs. I don't know why I'm doing this. This seems very stupid, but I I'm gonna try it this way real quick. I, I like the idea of like get having Karna actually do something. Why are there Roman soldiers in Britain? I mean, they're everyone's Roman, so like that dragon right there, that's a Roman. Jin Gong, Roman, great Roman strategy. Okay, let's make sure we actually break this time. I could taunt a saber so they get NP here, especially if I do all the defense ups. But that'd be kind of wasting Shin Gong's battery like that. All right, hold on, let me think a second. So I'm definitely doing this. Better if you're Buster Chained, I really don't think he would need the Buster up, but we've kind of been over this. And because he doesn't have that first skill leveled or upgraded, maybe we just do that. And I guess we taunt Chin Gong. I don't like that. Cause I do feel like if I do the three defense buffs, Burgess can just fit. You know what? Let's see what happens. Alright, better beer, don't fail me. Like, that's a lot of defense up. I mean, Morgan is Roman. Wow, are we not breaking? What are we- what the hell? What? I know he's 1-1-1 one, one, one and, and that kind of stuff, but like, Jesus, I'm so used to Benavir always doing like 200k plus. Nice damage nerd. Yeah, if you don't- it's so bad if you don't break there, because then Burgess just sits around not doing anything. Is he not MP5? No, he's MP5. I, I am surprised. Let's see, what's the play? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna restart. Like, that's just... What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? That's ridiculous that we didn't break there.
Because I don't think we'd even break that turn. I don't know if we could do 13k. We had such a bad hand. I guess Chin Gong's not leveled. We don't have the Mystic Code and stuff, but like still, I'm really surprised. He should be foed. Oh, have we not done his NP upgrade? Yeah, we must have just leveled him. That 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 ex that would explain it. If he doesn't have his NP upgrade, that that would explain it. Actually, th that if anything, now I'm a little bit impressed that he did that much damage when he's one 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 because the first skill upgrade actually does increase his damage. So yeah, I'm actually a little impressed now that he was doing that much damage if he doesn't have the NP upgrade. Yeah, that must be it. Keep getting these connecting issues. Yeah, well, if his NP upgrade's quick, we'll do that real fast. With us upgrading Chin Gong's Buster skill right there, though, we might not need it. But I kind of just want that done anyway. I, I keep forgetting that this account needs to do, like, a million strengthening quests. So I'll, like, like yesterday, I didn't really have time to, to play FGO. Um, not that much, but I, I autopiloted a bit on the side. But I was just, like, doing, like, the event-free quests where I could have been doing uh, strengthening quests and whatnot. Okay, well, that is the, uh, that's the skill upgrade, I think. I think the NP is the one with, yeah, that's it, okay. It's, yeah, it's one node. We'll just blast through this real quick. I'm not even gonna change the team because I assume this will work. Although that's a lot of uh, Lancers. Let me, uh... hmm. <clears throat> we'll do, uh, we'll do that. I, I, I did pay my internet bill. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. Let me see if I'm dropping frames in OBS. Nope, we have dropped zero frames, so I think it's just FGO nonsense. I'm sure we could beat the stage regardless, but uh, it's, it's not even about beating the stage. It's about, I want Burgess to get value, and Burgess is not going to get value if you have these turns where one of the health bars has got like, you know, 5k, 10k. She just isn't going to work that way. If you can't have her do all, when she finally gets like her normal cards ready to go, you, you, you need her, it to not go into the void. Because her NP damage is going to be pretty bad. I should have brought like a Rosh and Spartacus. That would have made this part uh, better. I like how uh, I brought Tristan, but there's a bunch of Lancers, so that might have been a mistake. I don't think it's game heavy traffic at all. I don't think a lot of people are playing right now, to be honest. I think it's more. Uh, there's just been a lot of weird bugs lately, and it's not just me. I've seen loads of people on our Discord and I've been on Reddit talking about the game not running well lately. And I've definitely experienced that. I've seen that on both my phone and emulator, where it's been running really bad. I think it's uh, a combination of like some of the major phone brands have done some updates, and I don't think it's very compatible with FGO. And that's happened in the past. That has specifically happened in the past, like multiple times. And then I think something with the last update just might be a bit um, shaky, like something might be a little wrong. I'm sure they'll fix it, but yeah, I've seen a lot of like disconnect issues, crashing issues, stuff like that. I've been seeing a lot of that lately. Hopefully it doesn't last too long. One, two. Hi. So, so the game said there was a lot of sabers, but uh, so far it's mostly been Lancers. Okay, let's go ahead and start blasting. Yeah, 
Yeah, I've heard Nox has more problems, but I think Nox doesn't have all the sound problems that Bluestacks has. Like, Bluestacks has so many sound problems. That's the main reason why I don't put any of my... Like, I don't, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons I don't put my main accounts on emulator, but one, it's against terms of service, right? So I'm happy to not break terms of service if I can. Uh, but then, like, because the sound is always so buggy on emulator, it doesn't make for good videos, but uh, the quality is generally better on emulator than... Uh, Push on Android. There's just no, there's no elegant way to to record footage on Android. There just really isn't. Without spending like thousands and thousands of dollars, a lot easier on um, on Apple. But I don't like Apple's devices at all, so they're also expensive as hell. Yeah, I've had some issues on, on Bluestacks, but less than Nox, but I haven't used Nox in a really long time. But yeah, Bluestacks has a lot of sound issues, which I honestly don't know how they haven't fixed that. Very powerful hat, indeed. Alright, let's see if we're done here. That's a really cool NP. It's obviously very simplistic. They didn't put a lot of like resources into it, but it still looks cool. All right, there's our bed of your NP buff. We do need his first skill buff, because it's really good, but I'll deal with that later. I was letting Bedivere down there, not doing his, uh, his upgrade. Wait. Have we not done one of Tristan's upgrades? Did I just see that? Shit! This whole time, we've been using Tristan on this account. We haven't had his buff either. I told you, this account has a lot of strengthening quests it needs to do. What the hell? Well, it's a good thing we don't need him right now. We're gonna have to do that before like Fluffy and stuff though, because uh... <sighs> okay, you know what? I got it. We gotta do that. I, I can't. I can't believe this whole time because we've been using him a lot recently. Jeez, dude. All right, Lost Belt Six going on the back burner for a second here. We gotta. Uh... We gotta fix a couple of things here. We'll take. We'll, we'll actually make it farming setup here, so this is a bit faster. Yeah, we've only got his first skill buff. I see. Silly me. Is your present uh, bigger? Let's see. Dude, what the hell? It's doing this so much. Yeah, once we like beat all the content on the Herc account and maybe the Steno account, I'll probably play that Bazette account we've got. Uh, let's see here. 114! Jesus, look at these stats, man! Almost 19,000! Yeah, I'm telling you, this craft essence is so good on her. Not, not that we, yeah, 97, already up there. I, I really think this is super, super, super good on her. Like, I think it's better than the Yang CE, uh, unless you need the Pearson vulnerability, obviously. But I think th this really is amazing on her. It just gives her so much star gen, because especially in a team setting, you're not always going to get to use two quick cards. So the extra star gen's good, the extra NP gain is very good, and then you get a lot of attack and yada yada. So, yeah, it's, uh... This is very good. We'll have to use that in a minute. We'll show off the uh, Super Fujino though. So I guess Fujino is just waiting on coins. Like I'm guessing you just don't have the coins to, to do anything with that. Speaking of coins, Ku needs them and Herc always needs them. Oh yeah, we could totally just use Herc against uh, the Lolly Dragon. I'm sure he could solo it because it doesn't matter if it's they do an NP every turn or just a buster card every turn, it's the same thing with the way he works.
honestly what I should do. And I was gonna use Chen Gong, but we, we don't really need it. I do need Spartacus's passive though, that would be really helpful. Excuse me. <clears throat> my allergies have been kind of kicking my ass today. I'm tempted to roll story on my main account, man. I just want more. I just want coup coins. Like, yeah, it's cool when I can grab. What I've, what I've been doing is whenever they add a new unit that I kind of want, I'm, I'm just rolling on them, and if I get them, great. And if I get coup coins, even better. But, uh, oh, hi, uh, Gwen. Uh, we bought the wrong setup for this. You know, I, I think Fujino can handle this regardless. But yeah, I just want Ku coins. I, I, Ku's my favorite character, and I want Ku 120 more than I want like whatever random new characters she adds, so. I'd be rolling story if Fujino is there, yeah. Because I think I need like 14 more copies of Ku to be finished. He does not care for Spartacus. If I brought Shen Gong, Fujino could probably just end Gwen right here. She might anyway, though. We'll see. You only get proto coins. Hey, I'd be happy for more proto coup coins too, but. That's more on the old account than the main account. Oh. Yeah, that that's that's reasonable. No buffs from anyone else, by the way. Just 260. Yeah, it's fine. She needed that NP upgrade, guys. She, she needed that, because, you know, it's not like she's tanky or anything, Chad. All, all she's got is the burst damage, right? That's that's what Fujino's for. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to free Melvin Ring. I wonder if we're just gonna keep fighting single. Maybe I'll I just do this in case they're doing a lot of single stuff. They might buff her again. People think she's bad still for some insane reason. I've noticed the player base can't like do math. Like they, they all they think about is burst damage, and, like the three turn meta and that kind of stuff. They don't think about because first off. Most of the player base can't partake in the three-turn meta for a lot of stuff. They, they just can't. Like, they, they're not gonna have, you know, double Scatty, double Castoria, then the like Nero Bride, and all that. Like, they're not gonna have these things. Um, you know, for farming, sure, you can three-turn pretty easy, but you're not gonna use most, most single-target people you're not gonna use for farming, outside of, like, those those uh, free quests that you make these days where the, you do fight, like, one enemy uh, and stuff, but... Anyway. Uh, most people think about like just your raw damage output and they don't think about their raw damage output versus how long can they stay alive right they, they don't they don't they don't think about that and her raw damage outputs fine anyway but uh, she also lives an insane amount of time and here's an example right there are some challenge quests out there and main story fights that are very difficult to solo or can only be soloed by a, a very few no, like a very small selection of units. Or it's even a stage where you don't even have access to a support list, right? Like Demeter. So even though there's a lot of riders that can solo Demeter, you're not necessarily gonna have one yourself, right? But so having things personally on your account that are good at soloing is useful because there's a lot of boss fights that are easier to solo than they are to beat in a team setting. It, 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 for most people, right? Now obviously it's normally the easiest if you're doing like double Castoria nonsense or something like that. But again, a lot of the player base is not gonna have access to that, but they will have access to, uh, you know, various servants that can actually, you know, trivialize and solo some fights that you might otherwise find very tricky. And sure, that's not always, you know, practical, but sometimes it is. And Fujino is definitely one of the better units for that. You know, I actually think a Grail Fergus could probably solo the current challenge quest. I'm thinking about that. He would need to bring the right command codes. The command codes would be a huge part of it. 
And you need to have the event bonus at EX, so he's got the 100% damage up. But yeah, I, I don't see why Fergus couldn't. He would kill Ku so fast because he's counterclassing and he's could have the 100% event bonus. And you could even have, there's all kinds of craft essences you could bring. Yeah, I, I think Fergus could solo that. Like, he, he tanky. He could solo the bloody maze. Fergus could solo the maze event challenge quest, which that was really crazy. Yeah, they've been giving battery to Buster stuff all the time. Um. Okay. Wait, is this the Tristan? I think this is the Tristan interlude where you fight Tristan. This is th this is actually a real fight right here. Uh, he gets the Tristan gimmick and he gets the Gwen gimmick, so he gets the eighty percent dam or fifty percent damage reduction or whatever. But this bottom one's better here. One of these is Lancelot and one of these is uh, Gwen, I think. Yeah, I think this is where you fight Camelot, Tristan. Like, the Singularity version of Tristan. Alright, let's see. That means we want Sabres. Because he still has the reversal thing. Do they have to be in the front? They don't. Now, I only want Chin. I, I, I know the boss has sure hit, but uh, I just need him not die to, to normal attacks until the NP, so then he can take it. That's the idea. This account really uh, does need to upgrade its sabers, because I noticed we do have some issues in that department. Maybe I should just do one at a time. Uh, if I have Caesar go first, I think it's all right. Go with guts. All right. Hopefully this will get the job done. I'm pretty sure Hercules can solo it, but um, can worry about that later. I don't. I don't think we need uh, to go that far. Yeah, and Fergus would also need to have the bonus. You would need to farm with him a lot during the event, because I think he would need the um, the EX rank of the, what, the buddy system, because that gives you 100% damage up, and that, that that could really make or break you like one turning health bars and stuff with BBB and stuff like that. Like I don't think it I don't think it'd be easy with Fergus, and that's actually something I like about that challenge quest is it's it takes some real planning. Because there's so many gimmicks going on, and like you sure hit and insta death and the counter taunt and all that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of command codes that can help and your mystic codes, your craft essence, and all that. All right, so Bedivere's got a brave chain. Can we do this? Because we don't want Caesar exploding. I wish Caesar had just gotten a card. That would have been preferable. Yeah, it was right about a min maxing and trial and error. I, I think Fergus could do it. Fergus is just one of those wacky low stars that gets a lot more value, and like most people don't know it. You know, everybody knows Ku and 100 Face now are really good, that kind of thing, but most people don't think about. I would actually like this. At this point, I want to save Caesar's NP, I think. Because he does do more damage. But Bedivere can get the buster up from Chen Gong. Hmm. Yeah, alright. I guess we'll just have Caesar go burr. I'll, I'll save his NP up, though, because Caesar should be able to break without it. Yeah, I hardly had anybody yet. Oh, wow, we, we didn't land a lot of our attack ups there, but it's probably okay regardless. He doesn't- I don't think he gets Gwen's damage resist until you break his health bar. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can see he gains the other blessing effects there. So even though he's only got 127k, in practicality, it's actually quite a bit higher than that. I, I, I think he does get the 80% damage reduction, but we'll see. Alright, I guess we give the crit buff to Caesar because even though he's got the buster up, he doesn't have that good of a crit chance. Although Bedivere gives himself another buster up. Maybe I should have just done it and seen if we'd gotten it. That would have been a lot of damage in one spot. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he he uh he got big damage reduction there. We had all those buffs and we just hit for like 40k. And yeah, Bedivere's actually got his buff that time. It's fine though, like we'll, we'll still win. We, we got enough of him. He's already about to NP again. Lancelot doesn't have his third skill. Why, uh, why would you do this game? Imagine having a crit buff. Okay, maybe, maybe we don't have this? Uh, we'll see. Oh no, <laughs> we're doing no damage. Okay, that's kind of bad. Two people are probably gonna die here. Uh, I guess I, I put this on Bedivere. Because he can probably get his NP again. I wish that it hit Bedivere because uh, NP gain, very high hit count. I wish he had hit Bedivere literally at all. That would have been really good. Kind of just struggling along here with NP gain. I could have waited one turn to taunt, maybe. That would have been risky, though. Well, I guess Rip Bedivere. Maybe someday he'll get his NP. Yeah, level 80, no third skill. Also, no foe items. And uh, no CE with an... Uh, actually, yeah, he's no CE at all, actually. So yeah, no foe items, no CE, no third skill. Not, uh, not the best. George being a huge help there, though. Like, he just bought us so much time to get our NPs and stabilize. Uh, if we didn't have George, we'd have been screwed. Like, they'd both be dead right now. Both the Sabres would definitely be dead for for George. George is really good, by the way. 10k, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's got 80% damage. It could be 70% damage reduction, but I suspect it's the 80. Okay, well, Atlas was not a great pick, because I had invulnerability to guarantee he didn't die to the NP, but he didn't get attacked by it anyway, so... Didn't really matter. I think we can win here, though. Oh, was Lancelot NP1? That is true though, his um his extra damage up isn't too bad. It's not like super great, but uh, it does ignore the damage reduction, so it's like an extra you know, thousand to two thousand damage depending on overcharge. So it's uh makes your normal cards get a little bit more oomph in there. And you could combine that with like the flat damage uh command code. Oh my god, I, he's going to... Why am I talking about flat damage? Never fucking talk about flat damage on this channel. Just don't, don't do that. But it's true though, if you did Lancelot, the command codes, and I don't know, like covering fire, the craft essence, 
that's uh, quite a lot of flat damage actually, and uh, that again ignores all of the, the gimmicks there. I, I think this, he, he's like lost his blessings and now it's Tristan like normal, so we want to go back to like Lancers. I think, I hope I'm right about that, I swear, it, maybe he loses the other ones but he keeps his reversal. I, I don't think so though, I'm pretty sure we can just Lancer it up here and we'll be fine. Uh, we don't have a lot of battery options on this account. Though we're probably not going to need them. Twenty thirty. Do I have twenty thirty? I do. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's necessary. Shit. I remember the crab, uh, the crab challenge quest that had the, the super defensive damage reduction thing, kind of like Siegfried. Uh, I, I did a few setups for that, but I remember one setup that I did that I really enjoyed. Uh, and, uh, the main DPS was Caster Coup because he has Divinity and he has Burn and he, he was AoE. And then I gave him like Covering Fire or something like that. And then I had Lancelot with him, uh, Saber Lancelot, for the flat damage, and then Waver, because Waver is good anyway, surprise, surprise. Uh, and then Waver gives the team flat damage up. So he was getting Divinity, the Crack Dessence flat damage, the Lancelot flat damage, the Burn damage, the, the, and then the, uh, the uh, Waver flat damage, and he was actually doing rather large normal card damage uh, and stuff, so that was really fun. All right, this looks like a normal boss fight. Now, I could just Lancer Artoria NP, but we got that Coup Brave Chain. But I don't know if we need it. But it's mighty tempting. Well, we don't need it. <laughs> there's, there's no way we need it. Uh, let's see. Coup's gonna get his NP no matter, no matter what, but I don't, I don't know who else he can give that to. Now he's not chaotic evil or any of that. Maybe Lancer Toria wants the attack up. Just to be safe here. I mean she would chat, she wouldn't. She wouldn't let us down. She's uh actually I guess it is good to gave Ku that skill, because I might just do the one Ku card. But I mean she's got attack up, buster up, right? Counterclassing. She's level 100. MP5. Right. She, uh, she can do this. I don't know if she can do this. Oh no, she got it. No, she got it. There we go. Well, okay. She did. Ku solo confirmed. But no, she didn't quite get it. But, uh, good enough. Alright, let's see what Ku does at level 80 here. Give him the crit up. He was actually single target, so pretty sure he got this. Although his craft essence is uh, no damage. No, he, he, he got it. A little bit easier than the prior stage. Although we did use Lancer Artoria, who is stronger than what we were using in the previous stage. Even though she is AoE, she is also a 5 star, so... Okay, we can go back to Lost Belt 6 now. We had a little side thing there, and we didn't actually complete all of our strengthening quests by any means, but we completed a chunk of them. H how much stuff do we have to do? We got the better bear one. We really do got to get that Mozart one done. Okay. Not too bad. <laughs> Music's pretty over the top. This account's quite close to getting a thousand SQ. Always nice to see. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna roll on, but... 
Uh, what is this song? I know it's from that. It's from a, a Final Fantasy like mobile game. It's like Brave something. Final Fantasy Brave something. Let me see what is the song. It is. I don't know how to say this name. It's like Soul Boss. I'm just gonna go with Soul Boss. But uh, yeah, Final Fantasy. Just if you type in Final Fantasy Brave Soul Boss, you'll probably find it. I've never played that game. I will say, if they added the Green Knight, I probably would have to roll on it on an ult because I'm using all my SQ on Ku coins on my main account, so. <clears throat> okay, Beastly's is better than mine, but I'm using mine anyway. That really would be the dream, is if they added the Green Knight and then Ku was uh, rated up. Or it was just like Lancers only or males only or anything like that to limit the pool. Using your own units, how dare you, indeed. Alright, absolutely abysmal opening hand. Uh, this is so bad that I'm actually glad we did the upgrade now because we have very minimal damage here. Might even need to level up. I don't have to necessarily do the rank up. The rank up for Bedivere only adds a few percent. But the combination of like ranking it up from rank one to like six and then also doing the strengthening quest, those two things combined is a pretty sizable amount of damage. I could just wait a turn, but. Really nice to do things in one, like the first turn, like instantly break the first health bar. Yeah, I don't know, this might not work. I, uh, that's a really bad hand. Somebody needs a buster card, that's a saber, I think. That is better damage. Why, why, why is it like this? Like, why? Because now we're gonna get all the buster cards. Which is what you want, you know, to do to the next health bar. And she's gonna have her NP, but she can't use it now. This, why has this happened every single time that I've done this stage? This is extremely aggravating. And now she gets this giant, you know, buzz, you know, brave chain where she can do a bunch of damage when the boss has, you know, 13k health. All right, hold on. We gotta do everything we can. Well, not everything. I'm not gonna do better of your strengthening quest because that takes too long. But uh, I'm at least gonna level it. Looks like we got most of the mats we need pretty smoothly, anyway. Okay, the hero proofs. We're getting into day. Okay, that's the stage where I actually we didn't have the chains anyway, but I wouldn't have done that level up because the uh, hero proofs were too too high. Okay, now see what would be a much better saber is summoning a single target saber, especially one that had um, damage for the team. Like, there's really no reason to use Burgess here because you need burst damage. So you'd want, like, a saber, saber that has, like, crit stuff or single target. Uh, even, like, Choco Jana would be better here, though, because she has crit stuff, and then she'd give charisma to, to Bedivere. Regular Gwen would be alright, uh, but he's still AoE, so it's not ideal. Alright, we can definitely break here. I would be truly surprised. The only way I think we would fail the break here is if we low rolled like the max that you could possibly low roll on the MP. Which we... I don't know if that was the minimum, but that was definitely a low roll. Are you kidding me? We... How did we do less damage there? 
What? Yo, wait a minute. That had to have been a super low roll. Because I just realized not only was that less damage than last time, but we have the higher ranked first skill now, and we did less damage. How did we not break there? Like, what the actual f Don't Don't make me do bit of your strengthening quest game. Don't, uh... I, 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 I honestly don't believe this. This is just... This is silly. Like, this is absolutely silly. Why? I don't know why I cast her first skill. We don't, uh... We don't need that. Look at all this wasted... value right here. This is ridiculous. Yeah, we, we, we objectively had more damage on Bedivere there, but we did less damage than last time. It was close. We almost did exactly the same damage as last time with the, the whole chain, but that's because of the Brave Chain. The NP did a good chunk blast. By the way, she's only NP'd Fergus, who is now about to be at 200% overcharge. This buff removal is nice, though. Too bad she's gonna not be able to remove the invulnerability because I cast it too soon. All the damage, though. Now we got a, a bunch of defense downs. Actually, maybe we will get to do it on the invulnerability. Just don't kill Burgess. The uh, short stop doesn't have any damage up still because we keep removing it all. She is NP Burgess three times, by the way. Like, she's only NP Burgess. Or Bargess, Bargess, Burger Mom, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call her here. Okay, so, let's see. Can remove the crit buff if I use this card first. That'll remove the crit buff and the NP buff. That means the next attack would remove the invulnerability. We do that, I think. Although, I guess removing the invulnerability is not that good because we're only hitting it with one card, but no one had their NP. No, she's definitely not programmed to do anything. Like, she just, it's just RNG. I mean, we've seen her earlier, we did the setup earlier, and uh, she and Pete all kinds of random people. Actually, last time, it took Burgess quite a while to get blasted. Well, if Vetiver lives this turn, uh, we'll win, and if he doesn't, we'll be cutting it really close and we might lose. But if Vetiver does not get NP'd this turn, we're definitely going to win. That was really frustrating, like the almost breaking but not breaking, Burger Mom getting NP'd four times in a row. Uh, yeah, not great. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Like, every NP she ever did was on the only target I didn't want her to hit. Every single time. Yeah, I don't think we could win now. I think we've lost. I might need to take this stage a little bit more seriously. That is so fucking dumb, dude. What the hell? Guess he does the defense down. It's all up to 111 Karna now. Emiramasa is super useless here. But they're both pretty useless, like, they, they have really low stats because they don't have bow items, their CEs don't have, uh, stats, etc, etc. But neither of them are counterclassing, like, they don't, they don't do anything. They're complete handicaps. I'm okay with that. Can she, like, hit Chin Gong, though? That's, there you go. God damn. Alright, see, if Bedivere hadn't, um, died like that, 
Uh, the boss would already be dead or, or, or so low that it wouldn't matter if I get Karna's NP. Where now it's like I've got to actually get Karna's NP or get a really good crit turn or something. You know, I should have already cast this. It's not that useful, but like an extra defense down could have been good. I think we're gonna lose though, very likely. Okay, we, we might go quite a few turns where Karna can't NP. For once, I want her to NP our Saber. This is the first time I want her to do it. Yes! Finally, she makes a misplay. There we go, we win now, because now he should get his NP. Actually, not quite, because his skill's not ranked up. Okay, now he's got it. Finally, she did something stupid. If by some miracle she's still alive, you get double overcharged Shen Gong. That was so dumb. <laughs> she NP Burgess four times in a row and then NP Betterbeer. Like, what the hell is that? Well, time to send her to the moon. One fifty seven, that's not bad. It's like, but it's not Christmas, and then you punch her in the face. That'd actually make a good edit in a video. You know, you have Karna show up, use some voice clip of someone saying Merry Christmas, like ho 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 or whatever. And you have, it's not Christmas, and you edit straight to him, like, the punching her in, at the end of the NP there. Don't worry, guys, we got the uh, gold saber statue. That's, uh, that's great. Alright, this is probably trash mobs, the, like, the green horses. But then it might be Morgan time. Why not? Well, she's not an art writer, but whatever. I'm still in the line at Taco Bell. Uh-oh. Are you like going in a drive through that's really long or something? Chat, oh, last time I went to the store, I bought a bunch of like stuff for tacos and I forgot to buy the taco shells. So, um, yeah, that wasn't the, that wasn't the best move I, I ever made. So I had to freeze the ingredients because otherwise they would, you know, go bad. So I didn't want to go back to the store. Um, but yeah, now I'm kind of like, I should probably just buy the ingredients again, so I kind of just wasted money. I, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, let's actually see how good Martha does here. We'll do this for the more, more damage. Hey, I like the one, two, three. Forty-three months. God damn. Yeah, we're pretty good for not having any Buster buffs or anything like that. We had Chen Gong there; she might have cleared them all. Can Ricky clean up though? Let's see. We can just kill two. If Martha could do 18k, we probably could have killed all of them, but I didn't have confidence she'd do 18k there. Well, maybe I should have. 200. Good turn, good turn. 
Oh yeah, fantastic. This is not a deck shuffle that I am a fan of. We're gonna fail to kill them both again unless we double crit. Actually, only one of them needed to crit, or potentially just high roll. 95 damage is definitely within the range of low high roll on a normal card. Oh yeah, now we get the attack buff. We'll give the kill to Ricky. No, we'll give it to Martha. She did most of the work. Alright, I think it's Morgan time. So the main thing I remember about this fight is you do you don't do counter class damage, which makes the fight significantly harder. Uh, and then on her final health bar, she removes buffs when Morgan removes buffs when she attacks. So you need to go very quickly at the end. Hey Arjuna. What are you looking at, Icy? What what are you looking at? Eh? I'm always so rude to Icy, by the way. I wonder why. We might be able to- oh no, you can't use Mordred here because uh, you have no support, I don't think. Uh, Is this like a preview fight or something? Do you have support in the Morgan state? Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna cheat by like looking up the gimmicks in my video, but I'm gonna look up my video to see if you had force support or not. So I thought you did. I definitely have memories of... of uh, uh four story supports, let's see. Yeah, you do, you do. So this must be a preview fight or something. Um. What will we go with then? Probably doesn't matter, we'll just do that. Uh, you probably just have to last a few turns. Wait. M maybe this is it then? And I just brought the story support mesh because, you know, that it's something everyone has access to? So maybe you can bring whatever you want. Well, I don't know. We'll roll with it this way and see what happens. Huh. Okay, we're gonna want burst damage at the end, although I guess we could use Hercules because she can't remove Hercules' guts buff. Uh, I remember Mesh and Castoria can basically do everything you need for the first two health bars if you play them properly, which we won't because I don't remember how to play them properly here. But I remember that was a thing. Uh, so you could almost get away with any damage dealer you wanted, but because I'm not going to play properly and there will be problems, I should bring a good damage dealer if I can. One issue I'm seeing here is, looking at my DPS, we have Buster, Buster, Quick, Quick, Buster, uh, Art, but AoE, not very applicable, uh, Quick, Quick, Buster, uh, finally Art again, but AoE, you know, Geronimo, not applicable, Quick, like, we have no Art DPS, our only Art DPS that's applicable here is Robin, I'm not exaggerating, that is, that is the only Art DPS here that is even remotely good. But isn't she immune to debuffs or something? I don't know why I'm having that memory, but I feel like she might be immune to debuffs. I think she removes one debuff every turn. I think that's what it is. So you would have to apply the poison on the turn that you're NPing. So that makes Robin less good. Or you'd have to have excess debuffs. So I'd have to give him like uh, the poison command code, which he has. I don't know if that's worth it. I've been playing through the Armored Core series and I just beat 4 Answer. Great game. It's nice to know where you got your avatar. Yeah, it's a good game, man. It's like my favorite game uh, ever, actually. Go want Lancer Artoria. I know it's a, it's like thematic. And I do think she gets her niche, but I'm not sure she's actually good here. Because she's still AoE. And I don't think Pierce of Honorability matters too much. I don't remember uh, Morgan doing any kind of survival stuff. Hmm. There's always Tristan, just because Tristan's good, even though he doesn't have a lot of, um... And he doesn't work with Castoria at all, and that, that's not great, but Tristan's just good, so maybe Tristan. 
I kind of want to try that. Taunts are good at the end. To like potentially buy your DPS a turn. Now, we really could just transition into Herc solo stuff, but he only will live a few turns, so it's not the best. It's not necessarily what we want to do. There is better beer. That's what I used in the video, I'm uh, pretty sure. And the video was um, Chen Gong and Shakespeare, so we had a bunch of buffs. It was like, um, I think it's something like this. But this account um, might not do as well for that because our skill ranks aren't as good. And I don't have Shakespeare either. There's Mash, but that's way less damage. Do I have anyone else that could turn one NP on their own? Because that's really good. If I had their coins, I could with K-Scope on just about anybody. Actually, on anybody. So even Ushi would be really good like that because she has the charisma. But I don't think I have the coins for her passive, let alone ranking it up. Uh, let me check on that though, because that really is a big boon here. Wow. I think it's because this account hasn't rolled at all since the coin system was added. So it doesn't really have coins on anybody. That's, uh, that's a pretty big yikes. What is Lancer Artoria's third passive? Let me look this up. I feel like it's gonna be extra class stuff. Ruler, that's so strange. I'd be fun to use her against Zeus just cause, but uh, that is so strange, giving her ruler. I don't even get why they did that. What about Tristan, what's his third? Is is caster not that great on a single target? Not terrible, but you know, actually, it might be because of Morgan. Because regular Morgan is a ruler. Uh, that uh, that uh, could be it. Uh, even though Lance Artoria is not, you know, quite the same as regular Artoria, but. Tempting to go with this. I wish I could get two on him, but I can't quite. I need one more copy or to get a bunch of bond. I'm sure more regular Morgan can be summoned as a caster as well. She probably qualifies as both. I honestly have no idea how regular Morgan is ruler. It makes no sense, but it fate does. They like making popular characters, uh, you know, special classes because it's more like eye-catching and oh, and you know, gets people to roll and that kind of stuff. Makes literally no sense though. Like rulers are supposed to be, you know, people the Grail trusts to enforce the rules and that, that and you know, not have a wish for on the Grail and so on and so forth. It makes very little sense, but they'll convolute some bullshit. Hmm. Could do, that's one way I could NP right away, but he's not very good here outside of that. There's Mash, but same thing, she don't, won't really add any damage. She does have a taunt though. Hmm. Kinda weird having double Mash like that. And there's very little battery on this account. Because I could give him K-Scope, but I want as much damage as possible, so I'd prefer not to do that if I can. If I'm going to do a setup like this. I, I might just change the background entirely and do something else, but we'll see. You do want to go quick. You want, you want to blow up that last health bar. I think what we want to do is, because her last health bar, she removes buffs, we want to have an NP on Tristan ready, so you break, and then immediately NP. 
And then, then uh, that'll fuck up the last health bar on a nice chunk, and then you clean up with what's in your bag. We honestly could cl try cleaning up a Lancer Artoria, because I think Morgan actually does have the niche for uh, Artoria. Now she's lawful evil, so she gets some of it. Because if she's evil, I think, it, then another one for chaotic, I think. Let me look. I know she has one for evil, though. But if she only has one, I'm not sure it's enough to... ...justify bringing her here. Yeah, she has one bonus for chaotic for 50%, and then another bonus for evil, which is 50%. So if you have both of them, it's 100%. With only one of them, I think better here. Ah, uh, hi, Lost. I, I was wondering where you were. I am late, but I have arrived. Yeah. There's also Caesar. Um, there's two. Working uh, Leonidas for a little bit more damage. He needs another taunt, but it's a little shaky. Also, his plus drop is very low ranked. Mash does not seem like the best idea I've ever had. Do that though. All right, I think we'll try this. Um, I don't think there's debuffs, so I don't think we need Atlas. So I'll, I'll go with default for now. But we're gonna have to remember some of the gimmicks because I, I definitely don't. Well, hopefully, uh, work is calmer now, Lost. Feels bad, Otto. <laughs> Feels bad. Alright, I honestly just don't remember what the hell your, like, priority is. It's like, who NPs and whatnot. I'm sure Lancer Artoria NPing is good. Well, I guess I'm gonna just fire this off. Hmm. I'm gonna use this on turn one and see if it comes back by the end. I might really regret that, but, uh... We'll find out. Mash. Art card, Tristan art card, uh, Tori, uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do mash. Forty. Oh, right. I missed the other hit count. I was like, what? One thirty-six. That's not too bad. Turns into Edmund for a second there. Doing the edge turn around. Edmund takes it to such another level though, because he, uh. He, uh. Does it all the time, right? He's just permanently like that. Edmund is pretty great. I was very satisfied with his animation update because they did a good job of staying true to what was cool about his original animations but then just making them look better and then they adding the new animations to re replace the repeat animations. That was really good. I see Mash gets the attack up thing here. Hmm. So there is defense down, so Atlas is not useless. But you could also bring command codes to remove it and stuff like that. Okay. I would really like to break here. If I do the art up on Castoria, 
and then do like the chain, she would probably break it, but I don't think that's a great use of the art up. It's not even the art up part, it's the invulnerability that would be getting really wasted. Maybe she can break anyway. She gets the three of a kind bonus on her extra attack. It's just no faux items, no CE stats, and yeah, she's 120, but that mostly just makes up for the things I just mentioned, so. Oh, I think, yeah, she got it. Okay, that's a bit more damage. And she did have the attack up from her, her... I completely forgot about that. She gets the attack up from her, her NP. Yeah, they did a lot of stuff with, like, regular Morgan that they've kind of abandoned because they've decided to go with... A lost belt waifu Morgan instead, so I think a lot of the other stuff we're probably not gonna see. Uh, which sucks, that's why I was so unhappy with them doing what they did. So I can remove her buffs, but right now all she's got it is an overcharge one and then the attack up. And yeah, the attack up's dangerous, but is it that dangerous? I'll probably get other buffs in a minute. Eh, I'll go and throw it out, the crit down's good. Never mind, she guarded it. Oh wait, he doesn't do crit down, he does um, debuff resist down. Which is not too important here. Okay, Mash has her NP. We're kind of ignoring Tristan's cards a lot. It would be impossible for Lost Bell Morgan to, to have done it. That would make so little sense. He'd be better off just not mentioning it, it ever again. There's a lot of plot points they've done that with. Okay, we're getting, uh, completely blasted on Castor Artorio. Hmm. This is kind of bad. Do the break chain. We give him his NP. I do Castoria's NP right now. I think I actually do that because we're going to get her auto cast, and then her first kill comes back, and she could. I should have. Here's what I should have done. Um, I should have cast her first skill uh, or third skill a long time ago because the, it, the cooldown would have been back by now anyway. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's getting really blasted here. あれはいつか見た終わりの星。どれほど遠く汚れても私は星を探すのです。さあ、幕を開けて。アランドカリバーン。ハッ。死にな。魔術に。モルド。オッケー。オッケー、we okay. okay, need to get our NP cuz yeah, she's going to do that. I might need to cast her other stuff too. I'd like to cast her other stuff though next turn. So it hits Tristan. Yeah, the issue is, uh, is Artoria is just getting blasted here. I could remove the debuffs. Um, she doesn't have Dot right now. It'd be nice to get the quick up, but I don't think it's actually worth it. Man, we have so many options like every turn right now. It's kind of rough. I think I just NP and I try to cast everything next turn and just hope Artoria doesn't get melted right here. Let me think. Do that. I can give 20% battery to Artoria in an emergency. We need to get the NP for Morgan's NP. And then she can give herself 50 if need be. The thing is, I don't want to break this health bar until I've got another NP ready. Because I want to NP her... Oh, shit. What the hell? How did we take that much damage there? Well, that's probably GG. That messes everything up. That sucks. I had so many resources available to me, I just wasn't using them because I didn't think I needed it. 
Yeah, we're gonna have to use like our third skill more. We're gonna have to use our taunt at some point. Because I never even used Mash's second skill. I never used it ever. And I, and I never used or Toria's third skill. I wasn't expecting to take that much damage there though. Gonna use Tristan's battery. I'm basically whiffing uh, the invulnerability there because I'm gonna use Astoria's. So I wanna do this because I wanna get the evade up. Let me overcharge it like that, and then I think we focus on cast Astoria. Okay. That's decent. それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ
The only good thing about that is at least next turn I get to take advantage of the uh, overgauge effect. All the nickels in the world. I don't. You, you, I don't. I, I don't. Uh, I, I like open my door right to my room, and it's just like nickels all over the floor. I have to like swim through it. You know, wade through it. That's what Chad wants. Okay. Do I remove that attack buff? I, I guess so because. Uh, He's about to gain her other buffs. Oh, we do have crit down. It won't matter though. Like, it, it, she'll just remove it, so it doesn't. It only matters if you do another debuff. Which you could do command codes though. You could do command codes with like throwaway dots just to buy room for your your debuffs that you care about. Uh, okay. I think Mash Taunt is really good here. So Mash has. Two hit and vulnerability, and then damage cut, damage cut, defense up. So I don't think I need to do the the uh, art up. So I, I keep just not using the art up. Look at that fucking MP gain, though. Did she crit? That's unfortunate. All right. Um. Damn, I'm so close to being able to use Castoratory as NP. Because I could like triple overcharge her right now if she had it, and if I use the battery, she'll be like half a percent away from the roundup. What do, what do? I mean, I gotta use her, uh, Mash's NP. I don't think I have a choice. You don't think she'll need the invulnerability then? I can overcharge Mash for a little bit more defense up, or I can give the attack up to Tristan. Probably the attack up. Now, we're about to get to 30% battery, so I don't need to use Castorius cards, so I'll do Tristan's. That'd be cool if Morgan had a thing where she could steal a little bit of, you know, health or whatever from the enemy, kind of like they did with, uh, Car Mela. But they did not do anything like that. Not that she needs any help at this point. She's a really good unit. If I could have uh, cast Story in Pete, I could have also given him another attack up and removed the attack down. Not a fan of Castoria there. Do I have Tristan skills? I got the debuff clear. We got a lot of debuffs. Mm, although we could just do Castoria's NP. The thing is, Morgan's NP is coming up, so I'd have to be able to recast it. She could get 50% battery to herself. I could do the art up and that kind of thing. I mean, it's possible she gets her NP in time. Mash gets the 20%. So actually, Castoria would only need 29% NP to NP again. Hmm. I kind of want to save Tristan's first skill for the next health bar. Okay, I think we're gonna Artoria NP. That's a little risky, but I could do this as well. Do I want to do the art up, or do I want to save it for next turn? I think we can save it for next turn. Man, they have not made a limited unit without battery in so long. Like, they keep making limited units that just battery, 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 battery. I mean, it, and most of them are 50% too. It's getting a little ridiculous. It's because they want to make sure they sell and they want, and they want to make 
Like it sucks. They used to not do this, but like they're they're basically trying to make sure people know that they're going to be able to use this new unit in a somewhat of, like easy, just you know, boom boom meta way. And the, the one way they can guarantee that is giving them a 50% battery. But yeah, it's getting really silly and kind of dull. So Tristan could NP right now. All right, let's think about this. We're starting to take some hits. Okay, definitely this. I kind of want to save that other attack up until I know we need it for either the battery, because I'd like to have it for the next health bar. I've got a lot of survivability. I mean, I've got loads of survivability. It's just about using it at the right time. I'd like to save Castoria's... I want Tristan to NP next turn, and then after that have Castoria's uh, every three turn buff go off, her use her first skill, have him use his second skill and his first skill. That's what I want. But that would mean Tristan would have to NP next turn, and I don't see that happening unless I give him the battery from... Mash. Okay, you know what? Let's do it. Maybe we'll need that battery later though to repeat NP, but let's see what, what we can make happen here. Now, if I, hmm, I want to, I need to do enough damage to break as well. I kind of want to do like the brave chain, but doing the quick card is the way to guarantee stuff goes smoothly. It's just, it's very, very little damage. He really doesn't like uh, Castor Oratoria much. Okay, can I break right now without... I, I think I, I could, but I'd have to use some combination of the resources I have. Because when this turn is over, Castoria is going to do the battery. Now, she's got to cast it now, because Castoria has to have her NP. Otherwise, we're going to die to Morgan's NP. Damn. It's gonna make it really hard for Tristan to NP when I want. So Tristan is gonna have 80% battery on his own. So I probably should have saved Mash's 20% battery because that would have been enough. The only way Tristan will get it is if um, he gets attacked, doesn't die, and then like I do his art card. But this is also assuming that we do 130 here. So I can either do Castoria's NP first because we lose the attack down and get the attack up. The bad thing is though, we could actually die. I could do the evade. I, I just wish I could do Tristan's first skill right now, but I absolutely cannot. But I could do the Mysticote evade on Tristan. He's got defense up. He's going to get the one hit invulnerability, but then Morgan's going to attack twice. I think I got to do the evade. That is rough. Wait a minute. Is she going to... I think she'll do the buff removal, though on the NP, and if I, that's good, that, I think though, I don't think she removes all of your buffs. I think she removes your most recent buff, I think. What the fuck is this? Fujino can't even 100% charge in turn one. She sucks, indeed. That is very bad timing, though, if we break the bar and then Morgan gains the attack, on attack, buff removal. Look, we'll still block the NP, but then we'll have no, nothing other than that. I can't remember if she removes all of her buffs or just one. Well, let's find out. Nothing like a bit of science. In some ways, it's better if we don't break, just because we wouldn't have to deal with that, but, uh... You know, speed is good, so... Yeah, we gotta get that Tristan NP before he dies. Like, one, we need one more Tristan NP on the next health bar. Because that should get her low enough that Bedivere can clean up. Okay, 
Okay, we did break. We got the overgauge. Okay, that's good. I think that's enough, actually. I think he has enough. So as long as Tristan doesn't die here, although Castoria has to not die too, because she has to do the auto cast. Please only remove one buff. Nope, she removes all buffs. That is so fucked up. I need to do um and like taunt there. And like I, of course she kills Tristan. She doesn't even attack anyone else, but we've we've lost. That, that is really dumb. That that's like I mean, your back row DPS has to be so much stronger. That sucks, dude. Don't remove the taunt, I think, though. Uh, so it's just RNG. The best you could do is have uh, Tristan at full health. So he probably won't die in one attack. That's so RNG, dude. Like, and it's only on that turn, and there's almost nothing you can do about it. Uh, you, the only way you could get around that is if your back row is so strong that it's okay. But most accounts aren't going to have a back row that's so strong that you can get around that. Hmm. Yeah, we would have won if, if uh, Tristan didn't die there. Yeah, I, I guess what we need to do, and I bet you I do this in the video, you need to not... Uh, she, you can't break on the turn she's in peeing. That's what it is. I bet you that's what I do in the video. Because that way, uh, not everyone's buffs are being removed at the same time. So if you have Taunt when you do break, that, that removes one attack of Morgan, right? And then if she attacks Tristan next, that, that will then get rid of your evade or your invulnerability or whatever. So she the, the odds of your DPS dying then are so much lower. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. You have to make sure you're not uh, having Morgan NP on the turn that she gets her final health for. That sucks because um, I have to do all that work again. All right, let's see. Uh... Not a good opening hand. We still do this. I think we don't... Okay, no, I'm gonna save that. I should probably use Tristan's first skill there, just because you're gonna have so many turns. Yeah, I think I have been doing his first skill normally there. I, I, I'm not gonna waste- I, I don't normally save Scum, but I, I'm not gonna waste all that AP just to do that for like the fourth time. Yeah, there's no way you're gonna need the anti-debuff that fast. Was your food fresh though, Otto? That's the real question. Also, what happened? Like, because if you had already paid, that means you were pretty far al al along in the line, which means, you know, to go from one window to a the next window, that's only like three or four cars tops, right, if, you if you've already paid. So how the fuck did it take an hour? Oh, you paid in advance. So you, it wasn't about going from the first window to the second window, it was you had to go through the entire line. Yeah, actually, you're more likely to get uh, fresh food at a, 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 a fast food restaurant if they are busy because they, don't, they won't have stuff like saved up and they're gonna have to make it to serve it, right? Because they're... They're like their backlog is gone, they're, but when they're that, when you're waiting that long, they might have made it, and then there's some bullshit holdup, right? And then the food's just sitting there, and it, you know, stops being fresh. But yeah, I would not. Uh, I don't think I would have the patience for that. あれはいつか見た終わりの星どれほど遠く汚れてもさあ、幕を開けて洗うのを借ります
So do, does Morgan go go to Avalon when, when we cast that NP? Did she get to see all that? Okay, a little wacky on the hand here. Do I battery on Tristan? I mean, so many turns should go by that I don't think there's any, like, drawback to doing it. Mash is not having a good time with NP game. Okay, everyone's still got uh, some hit immunity. I got like the evade, and then Mash is super safe. I do need to do that art up at some point. I keep whipping it. Hmm. I guess Mash does more damage because she's got that extra attack up from the, the gimmick. It's not that big of a deal, but... Might make a difference in breaking or not breaking. Okay, it's NP time. I can triple NP and get... Triple invulnerability. That sounds pretty good, to be honest. Assuming we actually break. We might not if I don't do... Maybe I, I just do the one overcharge to give him the attack buff. Although he's getting the attack buff from Mash. They'll have two attack buffs. 70k. That's pushing it. Yeah, I think we do it like this. It, it might be overkill, because Castoria's attack up is quite large, but, uh... Fuck it. You forgot the sauce! Hopefully you have sauce at home. You, you can't have you can't have Taco Bell with, without sauce. Sauce is very important, aren't you? Honestly, also, that, like, most... Um, you know, tacos and nachos and any kind of food like that, I think is always... Really good to have sauce. I'm a big sauce person. Generally, though, I always have a variety of sauce at, at, at my home. Okay, I'm pretty sure we would have broken there without Castoria's NP. That was very significant overkill. Man, Morgan really likes blue. Like, she has so much blue, it, I, I didn't even think about that until now, like, her attacks are blue, like, she has so much blue clothing. Like, the, I think her gloves are blue, for God's sakes. Like, the inside of her gloves, like, the outside is black and the inside is blue, like, what the hell, lady? A lot of effort put into this. Okay, we... I would, like, really like an art card on anyone. Like, if Nash had art cards, I would have her taunt and then get her NP again. If Castoria had art cards, I'd do the art up, and then, uh... I might do the art up anyway, just because I'm scared she'll die if I don't. She... And the other two have, like, evade and invulnerability and stuff, but Castoria doesn't, so I think I'm gonna do it. Like, the worst turn ever for it, but... Gotta deal with it. Yeah. What Tyro likes her, yeah, probably. <laughs> We need an NP that heals us. That's pretty dangerous. So close to being able to do Castoria's NP. She's gonna auto cast. So there's no point in casting the thing on herself. I could just save it or I could give it to Tristan. I think this is where we taunt. So Mash has, I think, defense up, double damage cut, and one hit evade. I wish we had Tristan's buff removal to get rid of that attack buff, but one turn cooldown. Tricky. <clears throat> so Castoria gets her NP regardless of using a card here, so she doesn't need to use a card here. I could evade, no, I can't evade Mash, and that would 
Uh, not be worth it. Mash should be fine. Maybe I shouldn't have taunted there though, just because I think taunting on the turn you break is like, oh, is like such a good thing. Because even though it'll get removed, it guarantees the first attack isn't on your DPS. Hey, boy, thank you for the 32 months, man. I appreciate it. Can I... If I NP on Castor Artoria, can I NP again? I think so. The question is, can I do that and NP with Tristan right now? Because I don't think Tristan would break if I NP'd with him right now, but he'd get it low enough that I could break when I want to after the NP. I wouldn't want to do Tristan's NP after Castorius, though. I, actually, I could break right now. Which would have been great if I didn't taunt last turn. That would have been so good if I didn't taunt last turn, because then I could taunt now, and then Tristan would probably be alive and everything. Shit, why did I not think of that? Okay, hold on. Can I salvage this even if I don't have taunt? Kind of. So I would attack up on... The thing is, I'd have to be able to NP again on Tristan next turn. So let's see, I lose the 30% battery, uh, but I'm going to get Mashes back. So then you would have the 50% battery and then two 20s. So you'd, that's 90. So Tristan would have to get attacked or use his art card. If I use his art card, that means you're not using somebody's NP. This is tricky. <clears throat> so I've got to save Tristan's first skill. I just wish I hadn't taunted because um, if I break right now, it's still perfectly possible that Tristan could die. If if the first person Morgan attacks is Tristan, then it'd be very it'd still be totally likely that he could die. Where if you have taunt, it's so unlikely that he doesn't because the first attack must be the unit with taunt. Then taunt was removed. She only has two actions left. Um, and then because there's still, th she could still attack any of the three, and then you also, she might buff and debuff, and then she won't always one-shot them. Your odds of living there are really, really good. Um, okay, well, if I'm gonna try to break here, I should do this, so at least get rid of one attack up. I'm just not sure, the, the issue is I'm not sure I'll be able to NP again, because I, I only can get to 90% guaranteed, and I could, again, I could do his art card, but, um... That would mean somebody's NP is getting scuffed. If Tristan had his NP right now, this would be a lot uh, better. So if I'm wanting to go for the break, I kind of have to use Castoria's NP before Tristan. So it kind of comes up to, am I going to use the Tristan art card or not? This might not be a good idea. I'm not sure. So Castoria needs to live. Mash needs to live. Yeah, actually, everyone, the way I'm doing it right now, everyone would need to live because I don't have a lot of NP gain. So what I need is to not have to use Lance or uh, Castor Oratoria's first skill, and so it's okay if Mash dies and Mash has Taunt up. That's that's the better thing, because then it's actually pretty likely that the other two will live. All right, if we fail again, that's the route that I'll try to take. It's just, it's kind of hard to set that up. I guess I... Triple NP? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of scared about damage if I don't. That, uh, that emote with the Sansen. Is, is that a Pokemon or something? Kind of looks like a Pokemon there. So we have like quad attack ups. I'm pretty sure we break. If we don't break here though, my whole plan is ruined. Uh oh. Fuck. Oh fuck. That's not good. I could have done the other attack up from the Mystic Code and that probably would have been enough. Shit. 
We can still survive the NP, but it, it like I don't know if we're gonna have like enough health, and I'm definitely not gonna have the taunt and uh, so on and so forth. And we're gonna lose a lot of the buffs too. Now, if I do the Tristan Brave Chain and he double crits, we might actually break, and then we would be dead. But uh, that seems unlikely. Although I could have just done the art chain, actually. That would have been pretty good. If I could do another Castoria NP, that'd be incredible. Yeah, if we had crit, we would have broke there, actually. I think if either of them had crit. Yeah, I don't think we did this right, though. Uh, I don't think that was worth it, because we didn't break. We're trying to lose a few too many buffs, I think. This would be totally fine if Mash had her NP. If Mash had her NP right now, it would be really good. It'd also be a lot better if we had um, either the Evade from Tristan or the Invulnerability from Castoria, because I guess I'd go ahead and cast this. Wait, who do I cast it on? Who's... Because she removes, she removes buffs after damage. So Tristan has one more defensive, so I, maybe I give it to Castoria, but then I'm losing out on battery. I don't need the battery, actually, I'm looking at it. So I guess we give it to Castoria. Okay, it's okay if Mash dies. It's not okay if the other two die. I really wish we didn't have this dot right now. should go for NP gain, because she'll definitely break, and if we NP, we can remove the attack down. Oh, if I just had Nash's taunt here, that would remove so much RNG. That'd be almost guaranteed to work, because um, she doesn't have her crit buffs anymore. Woo! Good thing she didn't have her crit buffs anymore, or that would have killed us. That's one good thing about uh, waiting out the second health bar, though, because if she had her crit buffs right there, that would have been really bad. Okay, we actually don't need Tristan's battery if I use the second skill, but I'm trying to think if there's any reason to do that. Because I've, I've got to use Tristan's um, first skill if I like it or not. Unlikely he's gonna live that long, so I don't know if his battery would do any. But who would I even give? Who would I give Castoria's thing to? I could give it to Mash, I guess. In case Mash happens to live, I mean she might. Although Mash won't do a lot, even if she NPs. If it could give her NP right now, and I could triple NP, that'd be worth it because it's another attack buff. Do I give the attack buff to Bedivere or Tristan? I think Tristan. I guess I just do this, because I mean, I, I, Tristan might live. Actually, I didn't. No, no, I did have to cast that because I need the quick up. But we only can block the one hit. All right, this needs to be a, a pretty healthy dose of damage because we need a bit of cleanup with Bedivere and we don't have uh, like Shakespeare and that kind of thing for our Bedivere so Bedivere's damage is not incredible. You know we could actually use David in the back because he has anti-berserker or even Ku, I forgot about that. Her, her, her class nullification thing though might actually work on your, your third skill passive. I'm not sure. Sometimes abilities like that work that way. Well, we might as well try and see if Tristan can live. I mean, all the buffs get removed and the other two will be dead. So the only way, the only way Tristan wouldn't die here is if she like double buffed. But that seems pretty unlikely. So 
Actually, if you have taunt there, she won't kill him because if a unit dies, she, she can't remove their buffs. That's actually how the timing works. Like if Mash had taunt and then she's dead, her taunt won't be removed and then the turn is canceled. That, that is absolutely a thing. Like if they get one shot, uh... Okay, if Bedivere NPs, I'm pretty sure we win. It actually would have been better if Chin Gong uh, didn't have the evade then. I can double evade. The uh, hard part... Okay, so we can turn one NP. I think we're... We, well, he's probably not going to kill her because I don't have this. Let's see, I could double taunt. I could just single taunt. So Bedivir can survive one hit. If we have a taunt, that's two hits. So technically, I don't need to taunt. Oh, well, not double taunt. I technically, I only need to single taunt. I could single taunt on Chen because then Chen is a meat bag for the, the next turn. This is risky. If I double taunt, Bedivere cannot die. Like it, it's, it, it can't, because she could only kill the. Uh, she only could ping off the two taunts, like boom, boom, and then attack Bedivere once, and that gets rid of the invulnerability. But then he's still fine. But, like, it'd be very unlikely that that Bedivere would die here. Having buff removal would be so good, though, because then she won't, like, delete people. Oh. Never mind, she's just dead. I'm, I'm almost sad because I was gonna try to min max some extra value there because on the next one I could mash taunt and then do evade on Bedivere. So that saves him from, from two hits. But yeah, no, she's just dead. Well, uh, Bedivere's kind of good, guys. And we didn't even have Bedivere's first skill upgrade. Jesus. Well, how about that? All right, now we got the other fight, but this account isn't gonna be able to do anything in that one and it's just for funsies anyway. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do like a Lancer or Toria NP real quick. Probably shouldn't bring a full team though, that way it's quicker. Because you, no matter what you do, uh, you cannot win this stage of a No wait, or can you? I can't remember. I can't remember if they just keep rezzing forever. Yeah, I think they just keep rezzing forever. Like I know if you lose, you still win. But uh, I don't think you can like win, win. Uh, yeah, and they have infinite guts, okay. I, I couldn't remember exactly how it worked. It's basically the exact same fight, it's just there's three Morgans. Which, uh, actually, in some, in, for some setups, this fight's actually easier than the other one. Because you get more MP refund, because you're hitting three people. So if you do, like, a Castoria or, you know, AoE thing, you know, that kind of nonsense, it, it's actually easier for that kind of setup, because you're just going to be able to MP, 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 MP. But obviously on a normal account, you're not going to have access to that, like, critical mass buff stacking with really strong supports like that. But yeah, you can cycle like supports really easily here. So you can do Castoria, uh, double Castoria, then like Nero Bride or Waver. You, know, you can just kind of keep that whole thing going and you can throw in some other niche servants to help out and you can do pretty well. You, again, you can't win apparently, but I guess you can't double Castoria because you're not allowed to bring yours. So you'd have to do like Castoria Scatty or Castoria Waver or, or whatever. But uh, you can cycle in Nero Bride and those other supports. And I guess I guess um, uh, Merlin's still good. Well, I don't really want to bring Mash because I kind of want this stage to end quicker. We kind of just want to do a big blast with um, uh, what's her name, uh, Lance Oratorio. Because the stage doesn't matter, we might summon Merlin. But there's literally not a even though people can slot three casters, there's no. Uh, no Merlin. Because Merlin's not good for farming. Alright, what can this account do with buff stacking here? Do I have Black Grail? I don't think I do. Can't do a lot, unfortunately. 
They don't have a lot of battery. You would want another 50% battery for this to go better. All right, we won't, we'll just bring that. Nice, quick blammo. Yeah, they probably are gonna buff Merlin at some point. People just won't stop complaining about it. And they've been so willing to give out 50% batteries to new units lately that it'll probably happen. And they'll probably make another quick support too. Yo, wow, you, if you get really min-maxy with a AoE art unit, you could definitely shred this uh, pretty quick. Do that. I guess no need for- well, I, I, I could- we don't need Merlin's MP for this stage. Oh yeah, another thing you could do to, um, this is pretty big actually, if you stunned or charmed or whatever, Morgan, and you had other debuffs on her from like dots or things you could cast, she wouldn't be able to remove the stun, and you could actually skip that first turn of the break bar. That, uh, that's a pretty big deal. I actually don't think we need, though, now that I think about it, we don't need, um, Jin Gong's, uh, Buster Up yet. I wish we had one Lancer Artoria, like, art card or whatever. Yeah, because the, the their buffs are team-wide, she'll have more buffs, but when you're doing a lot of buff stacking stuff, especially if you can work in, you know, things like Taunt and whatnot, like with the Poster Girl, it doesn't matter. They're gonna, they're gonna one-shot you anyway, it doesn't matter if they one-shot you, like, ten times or not. But, yeah, how you, like, really cheese this is you use Poster Girl on your supports and you're constantly cycling the supports. Man, look at that, we, uh, okay, well, we'll, we'll reset just to, to break it. To, you can't beat this stage anyway. But yeah, if you're doing like poster girl on your supports that you're cycling, it, it doesn't matter. And then because there's three of them, you're getting more refund. So you just you basically just need to make sure you can NP three times in a row with really strong supports. Now you're still not gonna win because they just get guts. But if you wanted to do that, you could. But that's really all you gotta do is have enough buffs to be able to break the health bar every turn, which if you're using meta supports, that's not hard. Now, if you're not using meta supports, that's incredibly hard. But with meta supports, making sure you do, you know, 200, 300k every turn with an AoE is not a big deal. Uh, then you just need to make sure with poster girl and things like that, that your your DPS doesn't die. But your, so your supports dying is a good thing because it brings in another support. So, like, honestly, it's pretty easy. Like, it's not actually that big of a deal. What, what's hard about it is just having the bullshit units to do it. Right? And also having Poster Girl. Because um, the thing about Poster Girl is not only is it a taunt, so it doesn't, your unit is safe, and it's like, it guaranteed brings in a new support and all that stuff. It also can't be removed. When Morgan gets to her, her final health bar where she removes your buffs, she can't remove a craft essence. So. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's not really a matter of, like, the strategy. I, I actually say the strategy part of the stage is easier in this one. If your goal is just to get to the guts, anyway. Um, it, but it's much harder in terms of just having the units and the craft essences, because that's a lot of rare stuff. Yeah, Poster Girl's overpowered as fuck for many reasons, and this stage is a really good example of that. And we... How did we do less damage? What? Oh, god damn it! It's because I, um... I, uh, I didn't cast, uh, Castoria's MP. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, what? Game crashing a lot here. Yeah, if you have a really meta setup, you can, uh... You, you you can definitely get like a f good number of the guts off of uh off of them, but yeah, it does. Ultimately, it's just for fun. It doesn't. You don't get bonus loot. You don't like not, nothing actually happens. 
uh, unfortunately. Um, I guess I should taunt uh, Artoria, Lance Artoria. We're at MP gain. Wonder what the absolute best DPS would be here, though. I mean, definitely an art one. But uh, there's a lot of options at that point. More about like which one you'd have like the most damage on. But if you had some utility, right? It's not bad. Or their own battery. Like there's a lot that could do it. Like yeah, Quick could do it as well. Like you could bring Scatty and Castoria, and Quick would work as well. Uh, I'm sure plenty of people have, have done it with Quick, but Art would be a little bit better. Yeah, you're really gonna want some uh, anti debuff though. But again, when you're doing when you're cycling meta supports, it's it's not hard to throw the debuffs. We're not gonna have enough damage on this one though. That's okay though. This, this account just it doesn't have any it, it doesn't have a single meta support, so there's no way it would uh it would do it. Yeah, I guess you could CS cast or toward his MP, and then you get another attack up buff, and then it actually gets easier. Then, uh, you're, you're ramping up your damage. I guess Quick could do a lot better now though, because Quick uh, has the scatty buff. Especially if you were using CS, you could get pretty ridiculous with that. All right, we'll uh, we'll just let it end though. Honestly, even this account, if I really tried and I got really min maxy about it and I did use CS, this account probably could get to the point where it, it procs their guts. Um, there's no reason to do that though, but it probably could. Like CS, if you are used tactfully. The amount of value they give you is nuts. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Alright, Chin is actually still alive. There's a part of me that wants to CS Chen to Chen Gong Merlin, but uh, that, that we, we will. Uh... Oh fuck! No, actually, I'm gonna do that because if I don't, we're gonna have to wait quite a while because Merlin has invulnerability. So this is just gonna save us time. So fuck it. <laughs> he, Merlin deserves it anyway. We 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 know this. Cause yeah, I'd have to wait another turn if, uh, if I didn't do that. He's got to go back to back to Avalon for the next story bit anyway. Like I think we'll die because we've only got one evade, so it, sh it should be this turn. Yeah, this stage just have a bunch of meta bullshit or get out, really. And then Poster Girl really is, like, super powerful here. Because it completely removes most of the, the issues of the fight. You don't have to worry about the boss having a million buffs. It just doesn't do anything anymore. And it can't be removed. It'll cancel the turn. It lets you cycle the support. Like, Poster Girl just completely sets you up for, uh doing that. Okay, then Morgan gets, uh, bodied here. 
Yeah, we won, guys. Yeah, the only things you can do there are, um, it, it, I'm sh there's probably a way that you could live forever, right? If you had like the most broken account ever, you could stall forever. But there is no way to win the stage because you, uh, no matter what, it'll just never let you get past the guts. Like, I think you could proc the guts like a million times and it would just keep rocking. Pretty sure that's this is where the time gate was. Uh, so people had to wait a while. Oh god, we're close to Fluffy. Ay, yi yi. Chat, can I can we get some content in FGO that will buy me a week? So I can then play Elden Ring and then we can fight Fuff Fluffy later. So I've like, you know, got my uh, units a bit more prepared. Yeah, I can't play Neo, but I've been playing Neo mostly as like a bonus stream, right? Like, I could play Neo for a week, but I don't think my FGO- My FGO fans would know what I was doing if I did that. There'd be some pun... Pinoco W's and all that in, in chat. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll just play Neo for a week. We really do need to prepare, though, on this account. It, like, it has the units that it needs, they're just not, um, optimized. What is NA doing right now anyway? Do they have anything good coming up? Like what's uh, what's next for them? Yeah, I don't I don't think JP is going to do anything for a while because the Valentine's Day event doesn't end for a few more days. And they're probably not going to start the next event right after it, so and then Elden Ring is going to be out. Is 52 literally their next thing? Oh, they're doing the Santa Arashigal event, I guess. Well, she didn't get to be Santa, but, you know, it's, it was, let's be honest, that it was her event, not, not, uh, Attila's. Because the rest of all popular. Yeah, we don't, White Day's not for a little while on either server, I don't think. <clears throat> that Odysseus challenge quest is fun. It's a good one. But yeah, I, I need chains. I need chains for Enkidu to get Enkidu's skills to 10, 10, 10. And then what is my... What is my Asclepius's ranks? So the third one is the only one that super matters, but it's good if he's 10, 10, 10. So I should, I should try to do that as well. Yeah, that and Enkidu are like the two things that need to be... Fixed up. And then if I can get Ku's third pass, so that's a big help too. I could probably get away without it though, just because I do have other things. And Tristan is good. Tristan will be pretty handy in that fight. You know what? We'll use Jason. Why not? Use Lancer Artoria to clear that stuff out. What's Ku looking at like? 300k! That's not happening anytime soon. I think you get 20 coins at Bond 10, though. I just need something for this account to roll on. The thing is, I really don't want to roll on this account, though, because I want to... I want to roll on my main account to get Ku coins, and then if my main account runs out of SQ, I want some backup in case they add something I super, super want. Well, I guess that's what my regular ult account is for. It's got a more flushed out account anyway. But I, I really like this account. It's pretty cool. Like the whole, uh, Her having Herc is nice. Having Lancer Oratorio is nice. A lot of unique stuff I don't normally have. So Herc has to get Bond 11 to get a single passive. Because he's in P1. All very painful.
I don't need to switch Mystic Code, but it should be an easy stage and getting XP is nice. I wish... Okay, I'm... I'm glad Bazette got added. And even though she got added where she's fused with someone else, which I don't like, they made her stage one completely normal. Like, if you read her voice lines, she refers to herself as Bazette. You know, it's her normal abilities. You know, she's just got a trench coat. That's it, right? So it's normal as Bazette. So it's pretty much what I wanted. So I'm very happy with that. However, I would have still preferred that we got Bazette later. I'm super happy to have her now, and she's super cool and everything, and that's great. But I would have rather they added Aphrodite, because that obviously fits Valentine's Day. So I would have preferred they added Aphrodite, and that means... I, I don't actually care that much about Aphrodite, but it would mean that we're way more likely to then get Zeus, Demeter, Mars, Hades, all that kind of stuff. So it would be a really good sign, right? So I would have preferred that they added Aphrodite, and then they did a Fate Hollow collab later, and then Bazette gets to just be, you know, a million percent Bazette, and, you know, all three stages, and this, that, and the other. Uh, although she'd probably be a welfare at that point. But, uh, yeah, I would, I would have preferred that. Even though, like, I do like Bazette a lot, and, you know, I'm super happy she's in the game. It's just, there was, there was hope for Zeus and Demeter and Mars and all that, if they had added uh, Aphrodite. Um, boy, do I wish Jason had starting NP. We could just double NP right now. He doesn't even have an art card. Oh, this is the wedding getting crashed. That's what this is. You know what? We'll, uh, we'll go really ham on, uh, Lancer Artoria here. Let's see how much damage she can do. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I don't like stage 3 Bazette either. And it's not really, and on that one, it's not really Bazette, that's the god taking over. But we can just not use it, so it's not that bad. Where with like a lot of the other characters, you get one or the other. You either get the normal personality or you get the god, and that's it. That's like, they, they uh, I'll, I'm glad they made an exception for Bazette. Well, we didn't get to do anything with Jason, really. Maybe he gets to do that art card. That's actually a lot of damage, though. I think that's the last time they used that background for a stage. Yep, the waiver situation is uh, rare. It's actually rare they do it that way. But yeah, he's waiver in all three stages. Yeah, they probably will use that background for other content outside of Lost Belt 6. Like events and stuff. I have no idea what this stage is. Boy, am I gonna be sad if this is a single target thing. Do we have the Ryko CE? It's not very good, but better than nothing.
Could be debuffs here, so maybe Atlas is good. Could be blobs. So in the story, uh, Kodamine is pretty much just Kodamine. Uh, it's a little bit different, but he's like pretending to be Rasputin because Rasputin gives him the body back after Lost Cult 1. Now maybe Rasputin will come back in for one reason or another. But from what I understand, it's basically Kodamine driving and he's just pretending that uh, he's Rasputin. And he's probably not even remotely loyal to the alien god. It's really unclear though what the hell his plans even are. Okay, that's blobs. Looks like you don't have to actually win though because there's 99 of them. Now, Artoria can definitely do that damage. I'm not sure about a Rosh. Let's see. We just do Artoria first. Actually, even Artoria might be pushing it a little bit. He's not gonna have her niche or anything, and we don't have that many buffs. But they are Berserkers, so I would think it's okay. Yeah, I mean, come on. She can't do 50k. I mean, what? But they might not want to do anything that significant with Kodamine just because he's the main villain in Fate Stay Night many times over. So they, they might not want to give him too much focus. Like, Muramasa didn't end up doing much either. Uh, Siddika, thank you for the gifted subs, man. I uh, think you're, uh, dual wielding there. Thank you. That was out of nowhere, but I, I appreciate it. Uh... I wish Arash could be overcharged by Castoria, because you get the attack up, but then the overcharge effect, which is a lot of damage. But, uh, I cannot do that, unfortunate. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, if we had Castoria's MP right there, he would have, uh, he would have killed all of them. That's, uh, insert, insert with the gift itself as well. Thank you. Little well, Zert 9000, nice normal name there. And every time I say that, I'm just increasing the odds of him fucking it up, so I should shut the hell up. Thing is, you, like I see, your name could absolutely get yoinked, so I would not, I legitimately, I would not do that. It's not worth it for a meme. Go like this. We killing. Don't 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 do it, sir. Like I'm for real. Your your name is definitely something someone might have tried in the past, right? And then they're just like ready to laser it, like with icy. Like clearly with icy, someone had like during the time icy had it. Someone had clearly like attempted to have gotten it and they just couldn't, so then when it became available, they got it. So you know, you could be in the same boat. Man, I wanted to NP again. So I've heard that some people that pre-ordered like online Elden Ring, it was just shipped to them early and they have it now. They're not even reviewers or big YouTubers and stuff. They have it too, by the way, but uh, I've heard some people just have Elden Ring, just it was shipped to them, and people were streaming it last night, but uh, Banco took the streams down, but yeah, there's probably a bunch of spoilers out there. I, I'm not, I don't dare look to like the Reddit or any of that, I don't, I hate looking anywhere, fuck that. But yeah, I, I know for a fact the streamers have it. Because, like, there was a bunch of Dark Souls streamers that were, like, playing Bloodborne, Demon Souls, and stuff like that. And they're like, hey, tomorrow we're gonna play more of this or that game. Like, Peeve and or, or Boro. And then on the, at the same time, they both were just like, oh, we're, we're suddenly not gonna stream for, like, a week, guys. Uh, we're not gonna have time to stream. I'm taking, like, a vacation. Like, they both did that. Some other streamers did it, too. 
just out of nowhere and it's like it's because they got elden ring and they're playing it and they're not allowed to stream it because nda but yeah they they it's all like if you look at some of the big uh, souls people it's so obvious they got elden ring uh, like a week early uh because uh, uh, they, they weren't like oh yeah guys in advance i'm gonna take a week off before elden ring like no they were like do, streaming like normal and had plans for the next day it's never <laughs> and the way that their tweets about it were like very cheeky so yeah they definitely got it and seneca again with the gifted sub thank you thank you dude uh six gifted subs man but yeah all the big streamers and stuff they're playing they're playing it as we speak like right now I don't, I, I'd be so tempted, but I would not want to play Elden Ring early. Like, I might play it a little bit and, like, look at, like, some of the stats and try to find the invasion item and stuff. But really, I want to play it on stream live. It's so, that's so much more fun. And I want to get invaded and invade and all that. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to, uh, play it off stream in, on under NDA and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, Jesus, sir, with, uh... 12 gifted subs in total now. Thank you guys. But don't, you don't, you don't have to start a train, guys. You've done, uh, plenty, but thank you, thank you. I don't think they could get away with playing it on Discord. I think they could play it with a very tight group, right? Like, like for the, the Dark Souls streamers that all got it early, like all the content creators, they probably have a side Discord and, you know, they can trust each other. Uh, so they might do that. But they couldn't do it on like their own discords or like or Boros discord and stuff. You couldn't do it there. That'd be too many randoms and uh, the word would get out and that's breaking NDA and stuff. But yeah, I imagine they're playing it with like, you know, each other. So you could, and that would be fun, but still. It, 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 it'd be really fun to just play it legit, right? And so I'm kind of glad I don't even have, I don't, I'm not tempted, right? Because I don't, I don't have the game early, so I don't have to worry about it. Now, what's funny though, the people that get their pre-orders shipped to them early, they're not breaking NDA. They, they never signed an NDA. Like, they, they didn't sign an, an, an NDA, they just got the game. So they're actually, they're completely allowed to do whatever they want. The thing is, Twitch is also allowed to play ball with Bamco and take the streams down if they want to, right? So like, Bamco can't sue, they li it, uh, literally, Bamco cannot sue the people that are getting the game early and playing it, right? They have every right to do that. It's their property at that point. Uh, they, there's no, they, they don't have to respect the street date if they get you know, it shipped to them early because they did not sign an NDA. Uh, but, you know, Twitch doesn't, Twitch is allowed to take streams down for whatever reason they want. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's kind of what let, lets them try to get a hold of it that way. Oh, I'm sure somebody is playing, uh, sure, I, I'm sure if you look right now for Elden Ring spoilers, you can find it, right? You won't be getting it on YouTube or Twitch. But if you look for like just uh, reddits that are like no holds barred, like I'm sure there's a, a no holds barred reddit for Elden Ring. Because like the normal Elden Ring reddit might not allow you, but like there, I'm sure there's no hold barred ones. And like yeah, Vimo and what what's what daily motion, shit like that. Stuff that's not as, you know, policed. And, or it's not even being policed. If there are companies that just won't play ball with Bamco, you know, there's they don't actually have any legal... The only legal room they have to take something down is when it's like a streamer or someone that signed an NDA. Right? But for people that just happen to get the game early because the Amazon shipped it to them too soon, or some mom and pop shop. I, I, from what I understand, the people have gotten it early. They normally pre ordered it from kind of random websites that as soon as that website got the stock in, they just shipped it, right? And they didn't, they didn't care about the street date. Where a big, a big thing like Amazon won't do that. But yeah, I'm sure if you want Elden Ring spoilers, which I don't, so don't, don't tell me, but. I'm sure if you go out there and check some of those weird websites, you can probably find all kinds of spoilers now, because people got the game. Yeah, some people don't mind spoilers, but yeah, I don't I don't want it at all. Like not in the slightest. Alright, this is so fucked up. Like Burgess is just alone, right? We're not in the city anymore because we left. Uh even though she's on our side now, and then she just has to fight her way out and she uh Gets too like beat up and riled up, so in her horn breaks and all that, so she goes nuts. She's just trying to get out of the city, man. Uh, that's all she's trying to do. All right, I think we cast everything and just see red press red. Seems like a good route here. I click that button on the side all of the time. Yeah, I'm. There's like one or two people that I follow uh, that their whole shtick is not doing anything even remotely spoiler related. 
So that's how I get like vague Elden Ring news, and I have our Discord. And so far, there hasn't been any spoilers on our Discord. Um, but honestly, now that we're like a week out, I might not even check our, our Elden Ring channel for a little while, because I really don't want to get spoiled, because we're so close. But yeah, Burgess goes a little crazy. Look at all this MP battery we're getting from the gimmicks and then our third skill. If it wasn't for our third skill though, we actually wouldn't have gotten it there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Burgess, uh, before going nuts, kind of over time throughout the story, she kind of realizes how just fucked up uh, Faye society is and everything. I haven't read a lot of the translations sort of like the last chunk of the story. I read the fluffy stuff uh, and the ending, but some of the stuff I, I haven't read. I just read summaries. I got so fucking tired of Lost Belt 6, I didn't want to keep reading it. Well, we absolutely destroyed this stage. Yeah, some of the characters in Lost Belt 6 are fine. And there's a few cool moments, but overall, I, I am not a fan of Lost Belt 6. I do like the Morgan bit, though. That was actually well done. Like the... Morgan getting ganked. They don't just do it out of nowhere. Like, it's so surprising, because you, you just think... Like, uh, any kind of coup would fail, because they want Morgan to be the big final boss because she's so popular and everything, but... Feels bad, man. See a Zert. And Fluffy, uh... Getting a lot of content after Lost Vault 6 and like craft essences and stuff. Hopefully, I, I think someday they might use him, his normal self, in a uh, like an event or something. I could see that happening. Now, I am definitely not watching the Elden Ring trailer. I, I don't see any reason to. Like, why, why? I already know the game is coming out. I already know, you know, uh, it, it looks really good. I like what Miyazaki makes. I don't want to see random boss designs. I don't want to see. I don't want to see any of that, right? Like that's all that's going to happen is if you watch the release trailer, you know, you're going to see a bunch of boss designs in advance and stuff. I don't want to see that. Like uh, nothing happens, right? Most people do it because they're like desperate for content because they want to play the game. But the game doesn't come out any faster if you watch a trailer. I, I skip trailers all of the time. I will normally watch like the first gameplay trailer of a game if I'm interested in it, and that was all I'll ever watch of it. Because normally the first trailer is not too spoilery, and the first trailer is useful in kind of seeing, okay, what kind of game is it, what's the aesthetic, right? Like, when they showed, when they finally showed, like, the first gameplay trailer for Elden Ring, that really confirmed, okay, it's very much like Dark Souls and that kind of thing. And that's all I wanted to know. So, yeah, I don't have any reason to watch it. I'll watch it after I, I've played it, right? I didn't watch a lot of the Dark Souls trailers until after I played it, and then I went back. I think I watched, like, one. I remember I watched one Dark Souls 3 trailer. And it was garbage, by the way. It was edited so badly. I, it really stood out. A lot of the other games have had really good trailers. But there was like this one trailer for Dark Souls 3, and I think it's the only one I watched. And it was just edited so badly. Anyway, but that, yeah, that was like the only one I saw. Then I later on, I went back and watched the Dark Souls 3 trailers for funsies. I gotta say, Dark Souls 3 had like the worst marketing campaign ever. It, compared to the other games, it was kinda shite. Uh, let's see. Could do a kind of typical setup again. We have a lot of units that can NP easily. Dude, I need to get Arash's passive, because then he could NP with Chen Gong right here. And I've got FP, I just don't want to use it because it takes so long to sort through it all. But it sucks using K scope when like you could so easily get the damage up instead. All right, we'll do it like this. Yeah, I, I really recommend to people don't don't wa don't wa if you're already interested in Elden Ring or any other game coming out, right? It doesn't have to be Elden Ring. But if you're already sold on it and you already know you're gonna play it day one, don't don't watch the trailers. 
after you've already seen enough. Like once you've seen like a trailer or two and you're like, okay, I'm gonna buy this game. Don't watch anymore. It's just gonna spoil stuff. And it's, it's really normal now for marketing to spoil stuff because they've, they've realized that there's no reason not to. If you enjoy the game less because they spoiled too much, it doesn't matter. If you bought the game, you bought the game. The, the, the publisher just wants your money, right? The developer might not feel that way, because like Miyazaki has said in an interview that he doesn't, you know, he wants people to not spoil things and to not re use guides on their first playthrough and stuff. So he obviously cares about that kind of thing, but Bamco ultimately just cares about you buying the game. So if, they, if spoiling literally everything gets more people hyped to buy it initially, even if they're like, wow, I wish this wasn't all spoiled after the fact, it doesn't matter, they already spent the money, so yeah. It, it, you gotta remember, it behooves the companies to be spoilery, so it don't. I, I'm a big fan of don't don't watch. Yeah, they they actually made Fluffy's full body in the 3D render, even though you don't see most of it. The games are so much more fun blind, dude. It's so much more fun blind. But people worry too much about being like left behind. Like, what if you know I'm not being meta, and what if other people find? things ahead of me and I look like a noob and that, they, they, people worry about that stuff way too much. Alright, two waves. There's a, a, a one Avenger mixed in. I think we actually do Lancer Artoria. But Arash is- no, we'll do Arash because that brings in Spartacus. It's just gonna be hard for Arash to do the damage if he doesn't have the overcharge. I should have brought a different Mystic Code. I could have done it with the damage up from Chen Gong and then a Mystic Code. We can get the Charisma. Yeah, the, the Avenger one's probably going to live. Not enough oomph! But yeah, I know it's hard for a lot of people. A lot of people are they're excited for whatever game it is they're looking forward to, and yeah, they want to see more of it while they wait, essentially. But I think immediately after watching a spoiler trailer or a stream or whatever, you always regret it. Right? You're always going to be thinking, I would have rather have seen that for myself for the first time and not known about it. And so when I was younger and I realized that, I just stopped watching trailers and like early streams and that kind of stuff. I just like, it's not worth it. You know, it might be fun for those few minutes or whatever, but then... For everything after it, it's not, uh, it's not good. I can't do enough damage to this guy unless I NP, which sucks, but I guess we'll do it. Actually, he's pushing it on damage here anyway. God damn it. I see, this would have been so much smoother. It's so tiny, but just having their passives would have made this a million times smoother. And see, now Charisma is going to wear off. And the reason is, instead of having these starting NP CEs that are 60% or higher, we could use the 50% ones with damage on them. And we would be doing an, a, like, like a rock would have done better, Spartacus would have done better. But yeah, I can't be bothered to use all my FP and sort through the inventory to get the coins, because you might not get the coins of what you need, and blah, 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 blah. But oh boy, am I paying for it. Oh, thank goodness we can at least do this. That's something. Look at all these guys. We gotta kill a few of them. We don't want them attacking six times in one turn. That's a good way to die. You know, I had hoped that Lancer Artoria in any version might have shown up in Lost Belt 6. I think that could have been pretty awesome, but uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Ninety percent crit. Boy, are we far away from winning, though. About to get dotted. Ouch. Guess we 50% battery. I think we actually. Do I taunt? I don't want Chin to die because I want his buster. Yeah, I think we taunt uh, Castor Artoria. Either that or just Spartacus. Or uh, Lancer Artoria. If we taunt Lancer Artoria, she'll get her NP for sure. 
I'll probably get it off art quick quick though. But she shouldn't die. And we have debuff clear. Besides, now I could do Buster quick quick, but that seems unnecessary. Get so many Artorias now. Got multiple of some of the classes. Oh yeah, I definitely could have done Buster quick quick. Sadly, these guys don't technically have an alignment, so can't get her first skill niche. I mean, technically Camelot is in Lost Ball 6, it's just everything is so ridiculously weird and random and has nothing to do with anything outside of itself. Yeah, we've never actually had a singularity set in Fate's history of Camelot. And it's so stupid because every time I have this conversation, especially outside of like my own stream, or even in my stream I've seen people bring this up, people act like it's too generic to go back to Camelot again. But we've never gone there in the first place. Like we have never ever seen the fake backstory version of Camelot. It's just talked about. They never actually set a story there in anything. I guess the closest to that is uh, Garden of Avalon, but Garden of Avalon is like short stories. So it's not exactly the same thing, and it's still pretty vague. Oh, I just dropped a frame on OBS there. Dropped like three or four frames, like boom boom. Okay, well things have now escalated uh, a little bit. Yeah, I'm dropping a few frames here. Hopefully that stabilizes. I was wanting to play Neo later, but uh, let's see. You mean Egypt? It wasn't even Egypt, man. I, I take a, I take an Egyptian, a, a pure Egyptian singularity, right? Uh, that'd be pretty cool. There, there's a lot you could do with that. Now, Garden of Avalon is, uh, it's different characters, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of short, short stories, and each one is different. Like, one's from Sir Kay's perspective, one's from Gwen's perspective, uh, one's from, uh, yeah, there, it's all over the place, right? I think there's one from Lancelot, uh, and stuff. Uh, and sometimes these show more than just, like, their own thoughts, like, with the, with the Gwen one, he, he's re recounting the fight with Vortigern, and so you see it from his perspective for the most part, but they just straight up like have a scene where it's just what was happening then. They have like a voice actor for Vortigern, you know, saying what he was saying when he was dying and stuff like that. Um, so it's a bit more than that, but yeah, it's uh, from a different bunch of different people's perspectives. And uh, the voice actor for Kay has been consistent from like the Garden of Avalon and the other times they've used him, and he's awesome, and I really wish we'd get Sir Kay. I want Sir Kay so bad. And F go man, like he is such a cool character and is really interesting. Yeah, Fate has completely ignored a lot of the world. Hopefully, they'll get better about that in 3.0. What's the stream look like, guys? I'm seeing I'm dropping some frames. That happens sometimes, like my ISP at night, they do maintenance. It's not like super bad, but it's like spiking every once in a while. Oh, you can see him over there. He cometh. We're not fighting him today. No way. It's already getting late, and uh, I don't want to do that right now. I want to get my Enkidu ready. Thank you. We'll probably do it soon-ish, but uh, yeah, not not today. That's going to be a hard one. All right, we have to go to Avalon still, don't we? We haven't done that whole shtick. I guess we do have a bit more time, actually, before that anyway. Do we go to Avalon before we... 
before we fight Burgest. I'm not sure. It's certainly soon. I would love a singularity set in the Hundred Years War, and you get a, you know, of course because it's a singularity, you want you know a few things to be off and different that need to be corrected, right? You can inject some you know servants that aren't from there or from a different timeline. Like if you're gonna do Hundred Years War, you know you you do a lot of the stuff, but because it's a singularity, it's out of sync, right? You have Joan of Arc there at the same time as Henry V. You can have some other famous English and French figures that were before and after that time period, right? Because that's just fun, and you can have a few servants that aren't even French or English. Uh, and also, the Hundred Years' War involved a lot of mercenaries and things like that of the other countries and stuff. The other countries were still involved, so... I mean, the, the potential from a, a Hundred Years' year, a hun War of the Roses, whatever you want to call it, um, there's so much potential there for, like, even German servants and... And so much stuff. It'd be awesome. Like, my God, that'd be an awesome setting. And you could throw in some dragons and, you know, singularity stuff, obviously. All right, that could be so, so good. Uh, and let's see. You could do... I've always said a, a, a Nottingham, you know, Sherwood Forest, you know, that kind of stuff. The singularity for, like, space on Robin Hood's time, you know, in story, but you know, with twists, you know. That'd be great. Like, God damn, that'd be great. Uh, like, there's so much stuff you could do like that. And what sucks is the only do it for Japanese stuff, right? Because like they did Shimosa, which is like through and through Japanese stuff. But that's the only time. They only do it for like Japanese events in Japanese main story. And I, I guess a little bit for Chinese too. Uh, but yeah, everywhere else, it's like, no, they either don't do it at all. Or if they do it, it's super weird, right? Like look at Britain, right? They just make it insanely weird all the time, right? You, you can't. At least they did some folklore stuff. I did, I did like that, but it, it does annoy me that Japan gets normal stuff and then everyone else gets weird stuff, or they don't get stuff in the first place, which is I guess is even worse. Oh, I don't know about that, because you have to go. Honestly, it's it's not even DW or Anaplex. It's Type Moon, and they, the, what they've said in interviews, it's obvious. You know, they're just bored of being normal, so. They, they're just not. I have no idea what this stage is. So uh, we'll go with Bedivere and what? You can always do MASH if you only want the one DPS, but we'll, we'll bring two. Hopefully I'm not screwing myself with this. I'll bring Atlas in case there's something nasty with debuffs. But yeah, honestly, 3.0, I don't think Nasu is going to be as involved in. I don't think he'll still be involved, but I don't think he's going to be as involved, from what it sounds like. So, hopefully that... The thing is, the new writer... Oh, hi. But the new the new writers could just be, you know, even worse in, in a different way, or in the same way, so... Lots of anime is normal, and Fate has been normal most of the time, only in recent years has it, has it not been like that. Like, 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 most, like, Fate Stay Night keeps, keeps things pretty, you know, close to what it's based on. I and mean, people, like, meme on it and act like it doesn't, but it does. Like, m the early works in Fate were all pretty, you know, representative of their actual stories and, and legends and whatnot. The only one that was, the biggest outlier was Artoria. But, like, everything else in Fate Stay Night's pretty legit. You know, yeah, Gilgamesh doesn't have a beard, but, you know, whoop de doo that, that's not the important bit. Um, same for APOC, same for Fate Zero, uh, even a chunk of Extra, not all, the Extra started getting a bit weirder, obviously, but they had some stuff, that, that definitely is when they started to get more weird, was Extra. Um, but yeah, Fate used to actually be pretty down to earth with that stuff. I'm dropping a lot of frames now, so unless that gets better, we probably won't do a bonus stream today, because I don't want to stream Neo and have, have it drop in frames like crazy. Yeah, it's getting better now, but for a few, for a few like a minute there, it was quite bad. All right, we just need to do a bunch of damage. Um, Bedivere, go burn. I do wish we had that NP buff, because it lasts three turns if we had it, and then that would uh, last for um, Karna. Tempting to do that buster attack, but let's see the NP gain. Your abilities don't mean anything. Like, that's such a shitty 
Like, people always come up with, like, really contrived criteria and act like that makes it not legit. The Epic of Gilgamesh stuff in Fate is outrageously similar to the source material. Every character motivation is the same. Almost every single event that happens is the same. Like, Ishtar being a giant fucking bitch and running to daddy to to summon the Bull of Heaven to kill Gilgamesh and everyone. Like, it, it's so similar. You know, all this stuff that happens with Gilgamesh when he f finds the, the immortality and loses it to the snake and that making him grow the fuck up. It's all the same. And Kidu dying, like, er, like the Epic of Gilgamesh is almost one-to-one -one exactly the same. The only differences are like their anime powers, but that, that doesn't mean anything. That has nothing to do with anything, right? That's not like uh, important to the actual story. Yeah, that's nothing like what they do now, right? Like, that's completely... Uh, I'm not nitpicking. Like, you're nitpicking, right? Like, that's, you got that completely backwards, right? It's not a one-to-one -one comparison when you compare fucking Van Gogh and Lost Belt 6 to Gilgamesh, right? Like, at all. Like, like the all the Epic of Gilgamesh stuff is extremely representative of what it's actually based on, and all the stuff they do now is just nonsense. You're, you're literally not making a single good point right now. Like, you're, you're not, you're, that's not even a coherent point. Like, that, what does that even mean? Like, their powers don't dictate anything, right? It's like, it doesn't matter, it literally doesn't matter if Artoria and Mordred double down with a normal broadsword and spear and all that and chainmail and all that, or if they do it with anime powers. It makes no difference. The outcome is still the same. You know, you know, Gwen still dies. All this, all that, 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 that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. It's not just coup. I mean, like Medusa is pretty accurate. The thing about Medusa is she doesn't have a. Medusa's own legends are all over the place, so they kind of cherry picked which ones they actually used. But I mean, welcome to any story. Medea is very accurate. You're, you're still not making any point. It doesn't matter where Gate of Babylon comes from. What does that have to do with anything? You're completely ignoring every point I just made. I just made like a laundry list of points where like the Epic of Gilgamesh is completely different from like how Fate is now and you're just saying lol no. That, that's pointless. Oh, Karna getting so much value right there. Unfortunately, I don't have a defense removal. Command code. Um, I'll do it like this for the overcharge. Uh, how? How does what I just say nonsense? How, how is what I'm saying not nonsense? Uh, how is the epic of Gilgamesh not being respected with with how Gilgamesh is? How is the Medusa not? based off her actual legend pretty closely. How is, like, you're not making a point. You're just saying things with no substance to them. Like, you can say something is, is one way or another, but you have to back it up with substance, which I am doing. The Epic of Gilgamesh is very close to how it actually is, because all the major events play out the same, all the character motivations are the same, and that's the same for Medea, that's the same for Ku, that's the, that's the same for Medusa. Now, Medusa's a, a bit different just because she doesn't really have a set interpretation, even in her own, you know, history. But the interpretation they went with is reasonable, considering, uh, you know, what legends are out there. Like, you, you can't just say, lol, no. That's all you're doing. You're just saying, lol, no. You have to actually back up one of your points with something that's like, with the Epic of Gilgamesh, for example. How is it not actually close to the Epic of Gilgamesh? You know, saying lol anime powers doesn't mean anything. Again, it doesn't matter if Humbaba is defeated by magic swords or by a fist to the face. That doesn't change the characters actually still being representative of their own stories and having the same character motivations. That doesn't, that's not meaningful. That's at surface, that's, that's shallow. You know, it doesn't matter that Mordred died to, you know, Rongo Bongo if it's all golden anime powers or if it's just a normal spear. That doesn't make a difference. I'm actually surprised that, uh... We're not getting fucked up more, but this boss doesn't seem to have a whole lot of... ...damage. Like, we're going kind of slow, but she's not really doing any damage to us. 
機コンビネーション行くぞスーリアの力へ我が拳に宿れ I get it's such a false equivalence to act like fate is just as weird now as it was back in the day. That's just total nonsense. There is such a dramatic difference between like the, the way Epic of Gilgamesh is represented, how Ku's represented, how Medusa's Medea is represented, versus Van Gogh, Paul Bunyan, uh, you know, Morgan now, all, all the, the there's, that's a mountain of a difference. Right, the older Fate stuff is still basing their characters off the source material, but then animating it up, obviously. You know, Medea's got purple lipstick and all this stuff. Uh, you know, it's still very anime, you got magic powers and whatnot, but it's history animated up. Now it's almost just pure fan fiction. That's what I've been saying this whole time, and you're naysaying me. So that, that's that's kind of my point. You're not making a point. You're not you're not articulating anything. You're you're just saying lol no. When I'm just saying what I just said this entire time. Oh my god, I'm dropping so many frames. Something is wrong here. I, I've dropped twenty thousand frames now. If something is fucked up. I mean, you keep saying that, but you're not backing it up with any substance. You know, I've, I've described how the Epic of Gilgamesh is very representative of what the story is actually based on. You know, he, the, his motivation with losing the immortality is the same. Why he tried to get it with Enkidu dying is the same. The Bull of Heaven showing up because Ishtar ran to Daddy is all the same. Ishtar running to Daddy because Gil didn't want to sleep with her, that's all the same. Uh, they're just, it's extremely similar. That is just such a mountain of a, of course it's anime, right? But that, that's what it's always been. Now, just because someone is not making a goddamn point doesn't mean they're baiting. It's just, there's no substance to your argument. All right, well, we should probably wrap up though. I, uh, my, it's late anyway, and I'm dropping so many frames. I don't know what the deal is. I'm gonna have to check my ISP because they're either working in the area, then it's not a big deal, but every once in a while my ISP just starts like... The pole in my area just gets completely fucked up and I, uh, my upload dies. And then I have to like call them and they have to come out and then it takes forever for them to actually accept that it's their fault and to send out a maintenance crew. This it happens every once in a while, but um... Yeah, holy shit dude, we're, I'm dropping frames like mad now. I've dropped 22,000 frames now. Well, anyway, I guess no Neo today. I apologize. I really wanted to... I know I got a few people that have been, like, really digging the Neo stuff and the Dark Souls stuff, but... That's... A, it's pretty... You don't want to play an action game on stream if your your frames are dropping. Uh, anyway, hopefully I'll be streaming tomorrow, but if my internet is still toast like this, I might not. So I'm gonna have to call my ASP. This is kind of concerning. But, uh, hope... I plan to stream tomorrow. If it's a slideshow, though, we'll, we'll see. Uh, what happens, but I, I will see you all hopefully tomorrow and if not whenever my internet is fixed But uh, take care everybody, and I will see you later